Entertain, so I'm coming to y'all with another video, and this time we live, baby. We live, we live, we live, we live. So make sure you guys please be respectful as possible in the comments. This after show is for you guys. You already heard all of my opinions on everything. Um, so this after show is really for you guys to call in. Click the link, it's pinned above, so that way you guys could give your opinions on what you guys thought about the docu-series. Who do you guys think? Is still holding some information uh, from the public. What do you guys think is going to come from this? Have you experienced anything similar? You don't have to share if you don't feel comfortable doing so. So yeah, let's get it started. The first person I'm going to add in. Well, I'm going to give an update. Uh, Drake of uh, Drake and Josh says that Josh reached out. Josh Peck reached out and you know, gave his condolences and said, if he, you need anything, basically was giving him some encouraging words since the Darkest series dropped. And also, y'all, Josh Peck is not related to Brian Peck. A lot of, I've seen that in the comments a couple of times. They're not related. Trust me, I Googled it. I said, all oh, this makes sense now. They're not related. Okay? I thought they were, though. But they're not. Coincidence of a last name, though. The last name itself could still trigger him. So, hey. Now, first person I'm going to add you guys is Dimitri. What's going on, Dimitri? Hi, Pierre. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What's up? What's up? What's okay. up? How are you doing? How have you been? I'm good. I'm good. Not you doing the windy. How are you doing? <laughs> shut Oh, my God. So, I, I've i seen all four of them. I binge watched all of them last night because I was, okay. I was I had all the free time in my world. I, I have a couple things that I'm still confused about. So, right. you know, uh, Mia Mosby, Miss Giovanni or Giovanna. Right. I, you know, so I think it's crazy that, um, what was his name? The Peck guy. Not Josh Peck, but Brian Peck. Oh, Brian I, Peck. I find it crazy that after he did his time, he ended up on The Sweet Life. And I was like, wait, but she did The Sweet Life. So I'm like, right. I, I had bigger questions of like, wait, did they never, they must have used him for a little bit, like in the beginning of season two. I looked know, it up and season. he only did a few episodes. Oh, and they probably stopped that just because they probably found out what was going on a little more. Right, or maybe people started yeah. to complain or anything of that sort, but yeah. he only did a few episodes. And I think it's crazy. It's like parallel universes that they both migrated to Disney and she did the later seasons, but they they came from the same exact like background and showing and all that stuff. But another thing I was very shocked by, and yeah. I had questioned a little, but then I did some research myself, was the fact that they didn't get Amanda Bynes to do any type of interview. Right. And 
And because I was thinking, oh, they probably didn't interview her because she's still in that conservatorship with her parents. Come to find out, she's not in that conservatorship at all. So I was like, damn, I'm wondering why they didn't interview her, or why maybe she declined, because I know she probably was one of the first people that they probably did try to contact. Right. She probably didn't feel comfortable to talk about it. Yeah. I've heard that she's trying to live like a regular life and that she doesn't want to be a celebrity anymore. And that's yeah. why she's like pursuing like regular like nine to five type of jobs. Yeah, because I know I've been following her on Instagram. I know she like is going to esthetician school. She's taking her degree or taking her uh, certification in nail tech, something like that. Right. So I think that's crazy. And then I think what's even gaggier is them using Ariana Grande so much, but she having no type of... I wonder if they did reach out to her, too. I feel like they just... reached out, and she said no, because her management probably even said no. I don't even think she directly said no. And I think yeah. it's because of all the stuff she's having coming to Her movie's about to drop, and also her album just dropped. I don't think it's smart, though, that she hasn't said anything. Yeah. That's not even to diss Dan, but just be like, oh... I uh, I feel sorry for the victims of it. Like you know, what I'm saying like not even like a statement. Yeah. Dimitri's still there. Oh, we lost Dimitri. We lost Dimitri. All right, I'm gonna add you back. All right. All right, what's going on, Kaya? Hey, P. How you? How how you? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all feel like Wendy tonight. Uh, but Pete, I, I just want to appreciate you for doing a review on that because I watched the first episode. I'll tell you right now, I literally could not get through it. I, like I started crying when the Drake Bell segment, and I was like, "I'm glad yeah. that you're good." It's that's just sad because you know, growing up, I know you said you wasn't a, a Nickelodeon, really a big fan of it, but you did know about it. I yeah. was a big Nickelodeon fan. Okay, let me tell you, I love. The Amanda Show, love the. I just remember, I just, I still remember myself watching it, and I loved Amanda Bonds. And I've always said this: when somebody's behavior changes drastically, something happened to them. And I, I've been saying this for years: something happened to Drake Bell and Amanda Bonds for them to like go off the deep end, and people right. were calling them crazy for years. And I was like, I think there's more to the story, and right. I'm. So all of this is coming out now. So did you like always, you said that you've always found it like weird that about the joke. Did you catch on to the jokes when it that was in Dan Schneider's shows? Yeah. I Carly ones were weird. Like I always remember the feet thing. And th th that's why I mentioned that video. There was this episode of Victorious where like they mm -hmm. were stuck in like a van. Y'all remember that episode where they were stuck in like a van and they couldn't get out? Yeah. And I Ariana had to get like a water and like she spread on. She was like, I'm so hot. I can't breathe. Oh my God. And like she grabbed the bottle of water and started like pointing on herself. Like, I was like, that's weird. Like, why is that a story? It was just like, there, Victoria's to me was one of the weirdest shows, kid shows. I don't care what nobody says. Like, some of the stuff that happened on there, it didn't make any sense at all. Yeah, exactly. I think because if you were, because I, I read Jeanette McCurdy's book because there was a lot of tea spilled in that book. She said yeah. that. Um, that he had the Victoria's cast drink that they that they literally all would drink. Did I remember that correctly? Right, because they, they were a little older than the other shows. The yeah, cast maybe they were fine with it because he let them do get away. Because you know when you're when we all were that age, right, Pierre? When you're young, you're 16, 17, You like want to grow up too fast, and then when you're able to do all this cool stuff, and an adult is enabling it, then they're right. gonna. They're gonna find it cool, so I can see why the victorious cat he liked the victorious cast because he basically could tell them what to do and they would do it. Versus right. the Carly cast, where I think some I feel like Miranda Cosgrove have some kind of sense because she's she came out fine, she didn't seem like nothing's going on with her. Like, you go like she's like very like put together, she's not like wild, like a wild child. So, I'm surprised because she was working with Dan since she was what, like eight years old when she was. Right. Really and the fact that she came out really normal shocks me. The fact that like Keenan and Kel, like they came out all normal, it's just unless Dan just didn't like colored people, if you know what I mean. I don't know if he's right. Like, I feel didn't... like if something were happened between Dan and some of the kids, I feel like he targeted the ones that were like I wouldn't even say weaker, but the ones that, that were easily that he could easily in infiltrate their lives. So exactly. that's how like Brian saw like Drake's family wasn't really getting along. The mom and dad didn't like each other. So he saw that was an easy way in and mm -hmm. how like badly he wanted to be in the industry. So like, I think they look for stuff like that. 
he gives me like Dan he kind of gives me that you know no one ever knew he was gonna make it and look he's like making all these kids dreams come true and this is how I know it because um Alexa Nicholas the girl she played Nicole on Zoe 101 you know her right right she has a YouTube channel huh? yeah okay so I remember following up on that story she was 12 years old and she got bullied on the Zoe 101 set by Jamie Lynn Spears and the rest of the cast now right. I was on Zoe 102, the reboot movie they did, Jamie Lynn does kind of have an attitude, so I kind of could see what's been going on. But you got to move right. Why don't you think they, they didn't go deep into that? Because she's been speaking out about that all the time. She's been doing the protests, everything, but they didn't go into detail about that. I'm not sure. I'm surprised that they didn't go into it. I really thought since she was going to be on there, she was going to tell her story, but she's told her story so many times. Like right. Two or three podcasts where she actually came out and said, I was bullied. My mom went to Dan directly and said, my child is getting bullied. You need to do something about this. And what Dan would do is say, like, well, the show is called Zoe 101. Jamie's the star, so we can't really do much about it. Basically brushing it off until it got really bad to where her mom just pulled her off. And we really didn't see much of her acting no more. And that was what's, right. that was really sad. And how, this is what's confusing me. How, not one, not two, but it was like what, four or five pedos working on a kid set like how do, how was it that's why i said it was a, it was a crew now did you watch the tebow interview no i watched it I, I i said i knew it was gonna be some bs i saw clips where he wasn't taking responsibility and i'm like but you're not understanding what we're going through he had said something about i'm sorry if i made people feel bad this is not just one or two people saying this this is a whole berate of people saying that you did this kind of stuff and it went on for years until you had to tell about some oh he never got kicked out i don't believe that i think they found out what you were doing in this new age where it's fun where technology is a big thing i feel like if he was still around nickelodeon he would have gotten caught now because right. everybody has their phones everybody has their phones on sets no one no one can be silenced no more and he, right. was, he was like the big person he is the reason i hate to say it Here's the reason why Nickelodeon is was was what it was and why we have like all those right. our memories. Nobody's now. taking that away from him. Now I've seen rumors of Zoe's baby being Dan's baby. Do you would allegedly do you think that may be the case? I don't I don't think so. I wanna ugh, I don't because wanna. that pregnancy, I remember around the time that it happened, it was kept so secret and it was so weird. Even though, of course, she was still young and being a young mom was like like shunned at the time, and I was like, and she was it's regular, but <laughs> it was still weird the way it was done. So I wouldn't be surprised if that came out to be true. That, but ugh. oh god, I really hope that that's not true. I want to hope yeah. they said it was her boyfriend who was eighteen or nineteen at the time. So I think that's probably why it was kept so secret because technically he's an adult. So that's what's going on. But oh, I also heard that um the girl that played Jade on Victoria's, like she was dating the person that was working on the crew. He was 36 at the time and she was 16 or 17 and they were dating. Did you hear that? Yeah. That's weird. I saw the deep dive videos on that. That is weird. Like, what is going on? I just don't understand how like people like how he was able to get away. But I and I said this to my friend, I said. He was kind of like the P. Diddy of that time. And you see how stuff is slowly, slowly starting to come out about him, about P. Diddy. And now he probably will be going to jail. It's happening with Dan Schneider. But I remember hearing about the Drake Bell thing like a couple of years ago. It wasn't confirmed. But I remember right. that he got touched by a man. People kept saying it was Dan. Now, I didn't remember hearing that it was Dan. I just remember hearing it was a man that worked on his set. And the fact that right. it finally came out when he was the special guest, I thought... It was gonna be Amanda Bonds. I said, I feel like Amanda Bonds really need to come out and tell her side of the story because whatever happened, I feel like something happened behind closed doors between her and Dan, and nobody fully truly knows. And if anybody does know, they're just not saying anything. Yeah, I agree 100 percent I feel like it's being like kept like a secret. Like I just feel like Dan is not telling us everything. I feel like yeah. he's holding a lot back and he's not telling us everything. He's just letting us know like bits and pieces and trying to prove his innocence but keeping some stuff a secret that's what i think is happening yeah do you think that he um he came out with because that interview came out so quick you think he said okay i need to get a black guy someone close to me so i can make myself look good do you think that was the reason of him doing that interview with tebow 
Yeah, and I think because him and Tebow still have like a good relationship, I feel like he picked him out of everybody. That's why I said Tebow to me shouldn't have did that interview because it, it made him weird. look like a coon. It does. It's like it made him why, look like a coon. It's like why are you doing? And then like the people that are like defending him, like the the Nas Declassified show, like y'all, like what was the point of y'all laughing about that? There was no point of y'all. It wasn't bad. It, it was in bad timing. I feel like they were trying to make they first he didn't watch the whole thing. That's the thing. Like people just watch the clips that we see on Instagram. Like that's like two percent of the whole entire thing. If you watch the whole entire Darkie series, you're not gonna make any jokes about it because it's really not funny. So that's the problem that he did to begin with, because he just watched clips on Instagram and thought that um it was like a light situation and didn't know like the depth of it. So that was dumb of him to do. But they got to understand, like, for men, because I know a lot of guys that's went through this, it's hard for boys to come out and say that they've been touched, especially by another man, because it hurts them. So the fact that Drake Bell was finally able to come out himself and talk about it, and I really do hope and pray that him coming out and openly talking about it gives him some help that he does. Because, you know, Drake does need some help because, you know, he's been going through stuff. But you know what? That's coming from years of abuse and nobody helping him. So I really hope that Drake is able to get through this and people just don't pick on him. Just let him be at peace now and, and stop, like, bringing up. I understand what he did was wrong with with that 17-year-old or something. I don't know exactly what happened, even, but it's, I'm not excusing his behavior. But that's that's just the recurrent cycle. People that are abused at a young age, they that's the behavior that they learn and they end up becoming to themselves, especially when they don't have any help. So I really hope that this is a stepping stone for him to get himself together and get himself in a good place of peace. And that's all I hope. And I just felt really bad. I just started, I started tearing up when Drake Bell started saying that story. The what fact parts, that he, besides the whole Drake Bell thing, what parts kind of shocked you with some of the stuff that you saw? Because the part that shocked me was um, some of the racist stuff that they were putting all that. Like I said, I wasn't a Nick kid, so I didn't know they thought that stuff was like that is crazy. Captain oh. Big Nose, like that is I, insane. I remember that was one of my favorite sketches. That's sad too. Um, it just shocked me that all of that it happened on all that set. It seemed like the all that set got it the worst, but yes, it's just I weird so how too. how. Keenan and Kel just came out so normal because like there's nothing going you don't hear them being problematic or nothing like that and I don't know it's because Dan didn't pay them no attention he just paid certain people attention so that's probably what's going on but it just shocked me right. that all oh and what that's what I meant to talk to you about that mom Brandy's mom the fact that she said Brandy's that mom she to me she's a little faulty in my opinion because your daughter did not want to be, and I'm not victim blaming, but your daughter did not want to be in the industry. Had you called the authorities or told people, hey, something happened uh, with the guy sending the naked people, you could have saved a lot of kids before he ended up that, getting taken down. Yeah, she went and said that, I could be, just correct me if I'm wrong, she said that she didn't want the police to think that she was a bad mom, so that's why she didn't report it. When she said that, I I'm like, at least not gonna think you a bad mom because you did report it. So, like, girl, what the fuck? Like, you have, like, you have I the just proof. don't get her logic. Like, you have the proof. You have him sending this to your daughter. Had you just took that to the police and say, my daughter is 11 years old at the time, my daughter is 11, and a grown man sent her a naked picture of himself messing with himself, the police would have went and got him out, got him right then and there. But you, you worried about people judging you for being a bad mom? People are going to judge you for being a bad mom because you let a man get away. And he probably, and then he was writing in his book saying he's a full blown pedo and how he has, he wants to go and find him a kid so he can go do things with them. It's like, huh? What? I don't, I don't understand. What was like, even sick was the, the serial killer person. Like, I wonder if there's a way to find out if, because Brian Peck is, of course, still alive. All these people that were in this docu series are all still alive. I just wonder if he's still talking to that serial killer. So if this serial killer that you guys don't, don't know, oh. if you guys haven't watched the serial killers, one of uh, uh, if y'all didn't watch the docu series, <laughs> one of the guys that uh, was accused of you know messing with uh, the children on the set, he had a relationship with the serial killer that ended up unaliving kids that he sent letters to back and forth, and that serial killer ended up unaliving kids mm -hmm. uh, after touching on them. And he had 
uh, a, a relationship with him behind bars and they will send letters to each other. I wonder if there's a way to figure out if he's still sending letters to him. Oh, if, and it, still was, contact with him. Uh, it was that guy that was dressed up as clowns, correct? John Wayne? Yeah. yeah. Um, that's, that's, oh, that's killer is not alive anymore. Okay, he's not alive anymore. But that's just it just it just blows my mind with these parents because I know how my family is. If that happened to me, my parents would have done something about it. The fact that these parents like care so much about fame and all that kind of stuff that you are like selling your kids out, you let your kids like and then your kids get messed up down the road and who gets blamed? You do. Though that's why Tracy, Tracy Brown, she was smart to get her child out of there. Understand that it may have hurt her, but in the long run, she said, Son, I did this for you. Most if most parents thought like that, we wouldn't have these problems. Right. And also make sure y'all go over there, Tracy, uh, YouTube, and make sure y'all subscribe to her channel. Uh I do like I said in my uh, video, I do remember her from YouTube. Like I used to watch her readings because I follow <laughs> I'm a weird YouTube watcher. Like I watch a lot of stuff and I watch like psychic readings. And I remember watching her a couple years ago. So that is where I remember her from. Any final thoughts about you series and any other stuff that surprised you? Um, no, it's just um, I'm glad that it's 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 sad it's coming out because you know when you're young you're thinking I want I've always wanted to be on Disney to be honest with you even though I love Nickelodeon but yeah, the same. fact it, the, the, but the fact that all this stuff went out I think I'm just blessed that I didn't have to experience that and I do feel bad I hopefully this is like this gets some closure to a lot of them and they're finally getting exposed and hopefully the industry does better because now I don't know how Nickelodeon is gonna do now because Nickelodeon's already like getting bad rep for now even though those i don't even know if those same people are working for them but if they want to like in the future not have something like this happen again they background checks background checks and make sure right. it doesn't matter who has kind of clout that 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 should not matter people's mental health should be should first come in that and i'm glad that it came out and i'm glad that people are getting exposed and i'm glad that people like jeanette mccurdy drake bell lex and nicholas all those kid actors on all all that that they all have to get there as clothing all right. All right. Thanks so much, Kai, for calling in. All right. All right, night. All right. What's going on, Dimitri? Okay. Can you hear me again? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, like we were talking, I think it's very crazy, but I, um, What's crazy is I was more of a Nick kid than the Disney Channel. I was like, I was, I felt like Disney was a little too kiddish for me. Like, even growing up, I mean, I would watch it, but I was more into nickelodeon by far and it is yeah. always disheartening thinking about this because the first few shows i remember was the amanda show that i would always be watching i remember ned's declassify and zoe 101 and all those and it's crazy to think that like that really is now like like our perception of it is messed up even though i was a child i wasn't thinking nothing of it but right I think it's just it's just crazy it's crazy 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 that like that all this was going on and I, I think that's why they don't do any live productions. I don't think anymore, like on Nickelodeon, if you pay, like if you, oh yeah, I haven't oh, seen no. anything. Like, and if it is, it's not, it's obviously not created by Dan Snyder anymore. So I think their last one was like 2018. So that's been what, like six, seven years now? Like it's been quite right. a long time, you know, since they've had a live action show. They all are cartoons now, but I think it's just to cover up the fact that all this was going on while being like at Nick. So they do that purposefully now that they don't do any other live things. Now, did but, you watch yeah. the T-Bone interview with Dan? Yes. What did you yes. Um, my first thoughts was, you know, um, that video of Coco Jones and she's like, oh, you would do it too for a check. I feel like he right. was doing that for a, I feel like he was, I think he was doing that for a check and not- You think T-Bone did that for a check? Yeah, I want to know how much he got paid to do that because you could tell, like, you know when they, you know when somebody's like having something to their head, you know they have that weapon to their head, and they're they're like, yeah. say what's on the script, say what's on the script, and they just they doing what's as told. I feel like that was him. Like, I feel like this was such a bizarre pairing too, because noting the fact that he was a full grown adult on those shows, he has no place to talk. He has no place to talk. Of course, you're not going to get treated. And I think with Victoria's too, most of those people were already 17 going on to 18 that first or second season. Right. That I you that's why I don't think you hear anything crazy about those people and their experience because at that point they're adults and they're not thinking anything of it. They're like, oh, oh you yeah, know, I'm doing this. 
because I'm I'm age appropriate and I don't think they really registered in their heads that like I think I'm the still only playing a child from that cast that will say yeah. something and that will come against Dan is Victoria. I don't think so. Uh uh-uh. uh. I, don't I think, think so. either her or uh I forget her name. Uh the one who married the older guy. Liz Gillies. I believe that's her name. The one that can yeah. sing besides Ariana. <laughs> I forget her name. Yeah. I Jade. So Jade. Jade. I feel yeah. like it would be one of those two. I don't, I honestly don't think so. I think if uh, that's that's a tough one. That is a tough one. Because we know Ariana. Because I don't think Victoria is too satisfied with her. Because think about it. Victoria was supposed to be Ariana Grande. And look what happened. But she can't She's get mad. Ariana. You get what I'm saying? But she can't get mad for that because that's what that's how she paved her career path. She did her career right. path in a completely different way. So she can't blame Nickelodeon for that. Like, yes, there's things that they highlighted and stuff like that, but she could have used what she got to an advantage and take it from there. But that she can't be upset with Nickelodeon for that. Those are also past anything after that. Victorious was her own decision. She didn't go into music like that. You could clearly see right. Ariana went full fledged into music, not wanting to do acting like that. And now she's just getting back into the swing of acting. So it's like, you know, I I don't know. And then thinking about other stuff that was going on, I think that all that was crazy. I, I there's a lot just to unpack there. Did and you I watch think that, all that. And uh, do you remember some of the racial stuff that they would do on there? And no? all, I don't. I like I said, my my mind is blurred from all that completely all i know is i remember the amanda show like it was all that the amanda show back to all that because the amanda show had stopped and i and the whole really penelope the Tate show. situation did do you remember like ever thinking like that's a weird name or anything like that like was that ever like a weird thing because i never watched the amanda show so it's like that's on my era so <laughs> do you remember mm-hmm. like like you being like hey that's like a weird name or any friends be like that's a weird name or like not was it just going- like Growing up, no, but thinking of it now, like like I said, I when watching it, I was like, that is weird. I was like, wait a minute. Because you know, you're just thinking it's just any other name. Like, I'm thinking this is just any other last name. Because somebody right. out in the world probably does have that last name. And, right. And you don't think nothing of it. So I really wasn't thinking anything of it. But now that everyone's coming out and implying like, oh, this is what it really meant. This is what it was going, it was about. And I think, yeah, it's just mm, it what bothered me in the interview with Tebow. He did not ask him about the humor. Oh yeah, well, I mean, it was all set up on. It was all curated by Dan Snyder, like that yeah, was on his YouTube page. And he decided to not speak. Like he could have been on camera for that documentary, but he chose not to, and he wanted to take this route so he could clear up his name. And like I said, it's very weird that he's so in denial of all this. The only thing I feel like he did take accountability for or like at least acknowledged was the whole situation with brian peck i think brian peck was the only thing that he and it's the only thing that as a person watching him is like okay this is the only thing that you acknowledged and you understand i think we both all mutually understand it was wrong you know but it doesn't it doesn't take away from everything else you did because i think he did something with Jamie Lynn Spears and Amanda Bynes because you have you ever heard of those cryptic messages that Amanda Bynes had put out and it's like yeah, a, the Twitter yeah and it's like oh Dan did it but it's spelled in different capital letters and you have to put yeah. the puzzle pieces to really also play. if you guys need okay there's something I want you guys to watch if y'all mm-hmm. haven't seen Zoe 101 in a minute so Zoe did a show called Special Forces on Fox so it's basically like a military type of show and she competed on the show right yeah she ended up going home guess why why she was scared to leave her kids by she was scared to be away from her kids for that a long of time for the duration of the show so she panicked and quit and went home because she was scared to leave her kids by themselves with their dad with their i thought she you see what i'm saying yeah that's and, and now that I'm thinking of this, I'm like, wow, like it all makes sense because it was kind of weird her leaving the show. Like Kenya was on her season. Kenya was like, hey, like, don't leave. Like your kids are fine. They're going to be taken care of. Like make them proud. Show them that you could complete the show. Da, da, da. And she was like, no, I need to be with my kids. I've never been away from them for that long. I need to be with my kids. Oh, Go yes. watch it back. Uh, it's on streaming. And uh-huh. yeah, that episode now is like in my mind. 
now it makes sense like it's yeah. now making sense and mm -hmm. i don't know but she she got her own drama that she is she has her own little drama that she she's something else to unpack but not related to this yeah i know what you mean yeah yeah, somebody said, yeah, I remember. Yeah, go back and watch that show. Um, Now, was there anything in the docuseries that sort of surprised you uh, with some of the stories that were told? Like, what stories surprised you the most um, besides the Drake Bell situation? Um, I think what surprised me the most was the two ladies talking about they were doing dual salary. And that didn't make no sense because... And, and it's crazy that he's even in the video, he denied that. He's like, oh, that's out of my control. Yeah, that might not be in your control. But how did it get so far that... Like this lady's talking about she contacted, you know, the union and unions talking about what are you talking about? There's no dual salaries involved here. Like they're you're right. not supposed to be doing no dual salaries. And then on top of that, you calling her and being like, I'm gonna ruin your career if you if this was you. Okay, so if it wasn't you dealing with pay, then what's the problem? Well, that don't make no sense. Then who right? Who, why are you so pressed and mad? I feel like he brushed that completely like that? under the rug because he didn't like those two women and then being writers on her show on his show like i that's what that was yeah i think that was the most weirdest one yet yeah, just the things he's making them do and then on top of all that just like the whole dual thing like but if that that's still weird to me because i'm like how did you allow somebody to get away with it and you just happen to call the union and then you come to find out like you know like you didn't no, I like it different watching the docu series. The writers to me are not innocent. I'm not saying they're like villains, yeah. but they're not the most innocent in this story. I'm sorry because yeah. you guys allowed a lot of these jokes and stuff to sort of go through, and like you guys are complacent. It is what it is. So yeah. I don't put a lot of sympathy for the writers, especially Jenny. Some about her run me the wrong way. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't like how she... that's two faced. I didn't like how she was telling the whole story about the other girl and the other girl. Right. Got, and I'm like, wait, that's not way too much story. business out there. But then again, that's her. If she was there and she that was her truth and that's what she observed, right. you know, like it's not like she was, it was all rumor. She was seeing it with her own two eyes and she felt like she needed to express that and let that be known and let right. that be put out there, even if the girl confirmed or denied it she that's what she saw i guess you know that's what she so i i mean i have i have like i guess sympathy for everybody involved in this but i think i also have sympathy for the writers because like if they the way they're describing it, it didn't seem like they got away with so much it seems to me that they really didn't have any massive involvement in the show they were just there to make a quota of at least we're hiring we're being and like the words of being diverse like we have females here that are are working on set with us so you can't be like this is all male and this is like this is discriminatory like it to me it didn't seem like they had too much like involvement in the show unless they did what they needed to do to get their little skit in and there or anything like that i right. think they were just there for a quota yeah i think so too any final thoughts um i'm ready for i'm ready for the next part of this when i mean the buyers out six. of i'm ready for part <laughs> six I think the attraction Amanda Bynes is gonna I think the Amanda Bynes is gonna speak out sometime. Like she's gonna speak up at some point. I think soon. I, I have a weird feeling somewhere in this year she's gonna end up speaking up. And either they're gonna do like a special extra part to this where it's just her, or she's gonna do some type of podcast or live stream or something, just like Alexis Nikolai, because there's too much going on there. And I think she's I from what I've watched. As of recent, she's in a space now. I'm feeling like she's not all the way there, but she's in a place where I think she would speak about this or at least right. get a couple of her thoughts out. Right. So, no, yeah. Thank crazy, you so much crazy, for calling crazy. me, Dimitri. No problem. You have a good one. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. All right. What's going on, Breezy? Hey, how are you doing, Pierre? <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up? Now, you are a teacher, correct? No, a counselor. Counselor, okay? So, yes. you work for children. So, of course... Your opinion is extremely valid in this whole situation. What did you think about the docuseries starting off? Um, okay, so number one, I just want to thank you for like, you know, talking about this because like, you know, we always talk about the other stuff and I really yeah. feel we're talking I about I told you I new content on the way. Oh, Ain't no more this, this crap, child. I'm sick of that crap. <laughs> you know I believe you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the first thing is, um, I'm actually taking it from a perspective as I used to watch Nickelodeon. Um, okay, yeah. so... Now, I'm going to be saying my age. I was actually a real old school Nick fan. Um, I used okay. to watch 
I started with Ren and Stimpy and Cat Dog. <laughs> so I'm kind of <laughs> a little bit older. <laughs> so okay. it's so because um I have Paramount and um I was watching Ren and Stimpy again and I was like, oh my God, like this is more like for adults than it is so for kids. So I was like a little tripped out by that. But um I think what it was is at the time in the early 90s, because I, I used to watch all that, but the all that that I used to watch would had Keaton and Kel. When I saw this docuseries, this is when all that was kind of a little bit later and I was kind of like not watching it. But right. with Keenan and Kel, what happened was during the time we we grew up on uh, in Living Color and like Mad TV. So as a mm -hmm. kid, it was really I really love Mad like, TV. Right, it was like <laughs> amazing to see like teenagers do sketch comedy because that was like the first sketch comedy show that was done by teenagers. But the thing is, is that I don't remember it being so vulgar until these people started talking about in the docuseries because when Kenny and Kel was on there, they really weren't, they really weren't that nasty. Like, I think it was a little bit more innocent and I think they kind of switched up when the, it looks like they switched up when the staff kind of switched up a little bit because right. now it came like they started hiring more people who had weird kind of like backgrounds and started slipping in like all this pedophilia and stuff like that in it. I just don't recall it being like that when, when the um chunky girl was on there, the girl that was getting chunky and they kicked her off, she looked kind of Asian. They said that they just got rid of her. I forgot her name, but they talked about her briefly with the ponytail. She had like the bangs and she was on all that. And it was like she had to lose right. weight, whatever. It wasn't that bad. So it was, her. yeah, right, 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 right. So when she was on that, it was pretty innocent. Like they were kind of innocent. Keenan Cal did, they weren't, they really didn't put them out there like that. Like they did Good Burger and they did a couple of sketches. It was the one where they had a teacher. She was kind of chunky and I'm older. She she was funny. It wasn't, it just wasn't sexual. But then it, I, I don't know what happened. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think they, they probably started hiring these this people. This was the era where it got kind of like murky. Yeah, that's where it got, that's where I stopped at. I don't know, like I saw them in the docuseries, but I didn't grow up to these kids. So it was kind of, it's kind of murky when it kind of got there. Now, as a child, um, okay, of course, I'm going to give them the counseling thing. But the, as a child, mm -hmm. if you see that as a child, you're telling the child that what they're doing and what they're saying is okay. So it kind of makes sense that maybe some of these kids that saw this are a little bit more sexually acting out or a little bit more like not understanding because mm -hmm. of what mm -hmm. they thought was a joke as a child because the way the adults past it's pretty sick but the way the adults pass through these jokes through these children the people the audience that look at that can kind of be sexually acting out because of that not necessarily knowing what was going on you know what i mean so it kind of it could have affected a lot of people to this day now at like watching it as a child like that's what i was thinking like from that perspective and it's just kind of bad because it's good it's bad that we're waiting this long to hear this but I really want right. to know how adults are actually affected by actually watching this. Like if they were like thinking certain things were okay and they really weren't because I'm saying like when they started putting like the toes, I saw the toes in people's mouths and things like that. Right. You're seeing, you're putting your toes that was something they had Sam, I mean, cat do a lot. Like every two, I remember episodes watching, like it was always a feet thing with her. And I'm like, this is weird. So think about a child looking at that. I, what how is that child as an adult now or is, is there are there a woman that was sexually active out did she do things like you have to think about what they've created by what they saw in the future and it just it's kind of sick and weird that that was actually going on it really is kind of disgusting sick and weird now amanda barnes um i don't think they're gonna get her i think she wants to move so far 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 like she she failed her esthetician test like once or twice and she's not playing that's the only thing she's worried about. I want to mention. That's, 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 yeah, like, that's the only thing she's worried about passing that test. Passing that test. Oh, but, you see, but you see the fixation on wanting to be normal? Yes. He's, you know what's crazy? A lot of people say that. They said the people that want, that is, they said the people that's in the industry want to be normal, and the people that are normal want to be in the industry. Right. And, but I think Amanda Bynes yeah. has lived through something where she's like, you couldn't pay me to go back into the industry. 
I like so. that's what that is. Now I did have a question for you, Pierre. Do you think that Hollywood is kind of like going down? Because we kind of seen like from the Jeffrey Epstein till now, like yeah. What do you think? Oh yeah, for sure. I feel like, like this is just the beginning of the exposure. We're gonna find out like ten times more by the end of this year. Uh, I wonder what now, that this means. Somebody, like, for I want to mention. They said, like you mentioned in your video, the episode of Victorious when they were stuck in that hot van. That was cringe how they had Ariana. Lick. Yes, it was ice cream. I knew it was ice cream. It was water. They had her lick ice cream with four guys she had just met. I remember that's what it was. Yes, yes. That and, yep, and that was other happened. yep. That that was another. It it, it was kind of like so seeing that and being ten years old. I wouldn't be surprised if a ten year old little girl put ice cream on somebody and licked it off of them, just yeah, from exactly. watching Nickelodeon. Like that's that's my like like the professionalism coming in. Like what is like what were they and doing? Victoria's was so random. Like that episode, she just literally ran into random guys and they had ice cream. And she was like, Oh my god, I'm so hot. Why do you like I it? Remember. And then she just started licking it. And I'm That's like, <laughs> and we're wondering why we get women that are sexually acting out. We wonder why, like, we they've been fed that as a child, but it, again, it was it started with the top. It started with the people that they hired. It started with that. I, I think once Nick got bigger and bigger, they started to realize, like, okay, we just need people. Now, I um, not to switch over to the Tebow thing, but I did mm -hmm. watch the Tebow mm -hmm. interview. The one thing I would say is that interview was way too short. For, way too short for you to have. Twenty minutes a, is crazy. 20 minute rebuttal for a four part series documentary. You mean each that was that's almost four hours, and your rebuttal was 20 minutes. The okay, so once the video started, I knew there was going to be some BS because as soon as he started the interview, he says, I reached out to Dan. Who are you? <laughs> like, like, you think that as racist as this place was. You think he remembers you and he thought about you? And, and what you bothers me, Tebow, <laughs> you was not no regular uh, uh, character, right. my nigga. Right. He's acting like You was like a he random was... pop-up every, like, 10 episodes. Get the oh, out my face. Oh, rando. That's what made me think, like, okay, I was like, oh. I watched that Carly. I, <laughs> I, I saw, like, bits and pieces. That, I was a little bit older by <laughs> Carly, but I was just like, Okay, this I, I was like, this some BS. Like as soon as it started, I was like, okay, this some BS. This some BS because and I felt ooh. bad because I was laughing during the interview. I'm gonna tell you why I'm laughing. That Tebow character was not a character. That is fucking that. What's his name? Debo. That's Debo because that's how he acted on the show. So I couldn't stop laughing because I couldn't take it serious because I felt like I was watching a skit. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I was like, this is a skit. And then <laughs> it was like he was reading cue cards that Dan what? approved. I was right. like, okay. And then did you notice that Dan was like fake crying? He was like, I just feel really bad. And he was like crying with no tears. Like I was like, eh. he's an actor. So that yeah. crying thing, come on, like get out of here. Anybody who has acting chops know how to make themselves emotional quick. I'm sitting that right here. I could do that too. I'm just saying it's like, it's not that hard. So like, please don't. Yeah, I just didn't. I was like, you're playing. I felt like he was playing with. I felt like Dan was like playing with us, and I felt like he, like somebody else said, like he knew ahead of time that this was gonna come out, and then he was just like, oh, um, let's just hurry up and do this, and then release it as soon as the first seat. See, he wasn't. He didn't even let it out on a proper basis. Like he's supposed to wait until the whole entire thing ends, and then say, okay, here's my rebuttal. He dropped it the first day. The first day that the um the that the um two part the first and second part came out, he dropped it for before Drake Bell was able to say his story. So it was you could tell he was already on damage control because I knew once he thought once he knew that Drake Bell situation was coming out, I knew he knew that that was gonna be it for him. Because right. at, now I will I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I did <laughs> grow up to Drake and Josh. That was like right. that was during the, all that season. That was during that time, and I just kept thinking like. Drake was the more nicer, cooler one, but in real life, certain things happened to him. And I was like, that just doesn't make like logical sense because he wasn't like too far off from who he was as an actor. You know what I mean? Like he wasn't too yeah, far off. Yeah. Like 
I don't understand the pedal. Like, I, it really surprised me when he when, when he was in that DUI and he was in that situation. I was like, that doesn't make sense because Josh was the wild one. You know what I'm saying? Josh was the chunky, fat one, wild one. Drake was always the level-headed one. And I didn't understand what went between the two of them because they were really, really, really close growing up. And then all of a sudden, it went from here to there. So I, I don't... I want to know what happened to their relationship. I really want to get into that, but yeah, because the, the thing is, there's like deep dive videos on it, but I feel like it doesn't tell the whole truth. And I feel like a lot of what happened, like behind the scenes that we're just finding out with the Brian Peck thing, is a uh, probably has a little bit to do with it. Y'all, they are not related. Because I googled it too. I said, wait, if that's his son, that's why they have a bad relationship. But no, they're not related. <laughs> no, I I think Brian Peck had a massive mind control over Drake. And oh, yeah. I think it was sick and it was disgusting because not to say you could kind of tell that Drake liked, liked women. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you could kind of yeah. tell like that was where, like that was where he wanted to go. Like that was what he was developing to come to be like, okay, you know, because he was all like, he was a heartthrob growing up. I'm not even gonna lie. He took full advantage of that. But it's just like you you take advantage of somebody's innocence like this. And like I said, it just you could just tell by when he got older how he was spiraling out of control. You could just like I would be like a Nick star spiraling out of control. That don't sound right. You know, like because everybody's talking about how Keenan and Kel came out okay. That's because they probably didn't get touched. They didn't get touched, they didn't get nothing, nothing happened to them. And trust me, Drake and Josh was on the same like the same outcome. They were about to be on the same outcome because Josh didn't get, it, it seems like Josh, nothing happened to Josh. And the same thing had, like, he's on the same level as Kenan and Cal. He's just not famous. But for some reason, right. Drake, something was going on with him. And it was all Now, what stories, like, besides the Drake uh, Bell story, like, what story sort of shocked you um, that was, like, in the earlier parts of the Donkey series? Like, um, some of the racial stuff, like, um, more, what was it, uh, MJ and uh, Brandy? Like, what story sort of shocked you? So the two things were the racial thing because, okay, I will say this. When it came to the, like, if anybody ever noticed, those black people didn't stay on that show very long. They always switched out those black people. It was like, here mm. today, gone tomorrow. Unless they were like that Jackson guy who had like his, his main role. But um, no, that was one thing. The second thing that got me was the conservative shift. I just couldn't get past the fact that they were infiltrating on those people to get them to get those conservatorships from their parents and how much control they had with that. Like, I I just couldn't believe it. Like, I don't know. It's like, I don't want to blame the parent or anything, but I'm just like, you're just going to let your child go? Like, I don't care what my child is saying. I'm not signing no document to get rid of you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to have to right. go through me. So it was really... <laughs> It just is really questionable that they were able to do those conservative ships like that. Like I was just confused about that. Yeah, those that that's what really got me. But the the racism thing, I definitely saw. I didn't see the racism thing. I just knew that they never really kept black people like that. It was just Keenan and Kel, and then everybody was in like the Jackson kid, and then everybody else was indispensable. It was like here today, gone tomorrow. Here today, gone tomorrow. Here today, gone tomorrow. I was like, oh okay, this is kind of weird. Do you feel like <laughs> anybody else is going to speak out from other shows like? Um... Maybe from Victorious, maybe from my Carly. Do uh, another person that I uh, that might speak out, Andre from Victorious. Do you feel like he might speak up with anything? Like, who do you think that hasn't spoken out that will speak out later on? I think um, Josh Bell is going to say something. Mm -hmm. um, I think Josh. I think Josh is going to say something. Um, I think. I don't think, um, cause I, like I said, I'm a little older, so I don't think Keenan and Kel, I wouldn't be surprised if the chunky, I don't know. I wonder what the chunky girl, the one that used to be the lunch lady, what her from all that, what her experience was, because I don't know, she was a little bit older, but like I said, they, they were nicer to them when they were younger, when I was watching it and set, right. and then started to get a little bit more weird. Like, um, I feel sorry for the people that have been younger than me because I wouldn't be surprised if all y'all sexually acting out growing up. So, um, yeah so yeah all right any final thoughts no that's about it like the video <laughs> all right night all right i'll make sure you guys please hit that like button please okay also um this was the scene which i just looked up now that i was talking about so here's ariana she was stuck in a hot van. Mind you, these boys are strangers that she came into contact with. They started spraying her with water guns. I'm going to skip through it. 
and then they bring her ice cream and they have her lick it. It doesn't get weirder there. I mean, it doesn't stop. The weirdness doesn't stop there. She licks it and all of a sudden she's sitting in his lap and they're doing pottery in the hot ass sun. How does that make any sense? I remember watching this as a kid. Like, I didn't think anything such, but I was like, this is weird. Like, I didn't get it. Like, it didn't click for me. So that's the episode I was talking about. All right. Uh, what is going on, uh, Indigo? Hey, can you guys what's hear up, me? I was going to say, as a person who really liked Nick and Disney, I was really mortified when I seen the clips and part of the interview. Because I'm mm -hmm. just like, in every industry, we are seeing that child exploitation was at the forefront. And I think what we're realizing is how complicit adults are in like using children as a stepping stone for financial stability. I feel like even right. though kids have big dreams and aspirations, for you to basically sell out your child so that you can live a great life and then also your kids don't end up being able to enjoy any of the money from their labor and be able to be financially stable. Like in the chat, I think somebody brought up like um, Shirley Temple and some of these mm -hmm. young, young child actors that like as babies, they were being like coerced by older men and everything else. So I feel like the Drake Bell situation was really sad because as a person who really liked Drake and Josh, when certain comments were being made about him and you see the way he portrayed himself on the show, it was just like, it wasn't making sense. And um, right. I was gonna say Victorious was very, very weird. And I feel like Ariana Grande really does need to say something. Cause it's like, the yes. way they portrayed her on that show was so sick. And you also- She got the worst out of everybody. And I feel like they just hypersexualized her so much because they portrayed her to be innocent, but they was like, it's like they were it was selling her to like older men. Girl, those little nasty schoolgirl school girl corns that get with older men. That's the vibe that her character was, literally. It was really bad. And I think also the one with the black boy that they had him like as big nose, I felt like that one was also weird towards black people. Cause it's like, how are you being racist and hypersexual at the same time? I felt like that was kind of really scary. And him talking about how he was uncomfortable playing that role. I think the problem mm -hmm. now is how are these people going to be able to comfortably kind of come out and speak about these things? Cause I feel like, Knowing people who have been like sexually abused and all that kind of stuff, it can be really embarrassing. It's one thing to kind of go to your family and your family not believe you, but for everybody in the world to be able to like see you in 4K trying to like explain your situation and people questioning you about why you didn't speak out earlier or like kind of looking at you weird. Everywhere you go, it's like people are going to kind of be victimizing you and you kind of just want to have a right. normal life. So I hope that they kind of now take a deeper look into like child actors and the work environment and having therapists and like parents also being more involved. Like you can't drop off your child at a set and just leave and then come back when they finish working. Like that's not a teenager right. working at McDonald's or something like that. That's a whole kid being around a whole bunch of adults. Kids have to that eat and stuff. Like why are you not supervising and watching like the food that they eat, which adults they're interacting with? I feel like the adults weren't even trying to develop a relationship with the people who are on set so that they could kind of discern who should be around their kids. It was kind of like, oh, my kid's going to be our milk ticket out of poverty. So I'm just going to leave them here. They'll be fine because they're the professionals. And it's just like, you're a parent. You're supposed to right. be there every step of the way. And if this kid is the reason why you're able to afford your home and everything else, you're trying to make it seem like your other job is bringing the bread and butter when you know the real checks is coming from the kid. Why are Speaking you not of on that, the set? Yes. So Drake's mom, a lot of the viewers are blaming it, including myself a little bit. I'm not going to lie. For some of the stuff that happened to Drake, of course, it's still Brian Peck's fault because he's a disgusting bastard. But a lot of the viewers feel as if had Drake's mom been a little bit more hands-on and been more attentive instead of... um going with Brian and some of the stuff that he was telling her and making sure that the dad wasn't in Drake's life, that some of the stuff that happened to Drake could have been prevented. What do you think about that? 
Um, I feel like I agree. And I feel like this also goes to show with co-parenting, even if your relationship does not work out with your partner, if you have a child with somebody who's willing to be involved in the child's life and has the child's best interest, you don't try and use the kid as a way to get back at the person because you feel like your relationship with the person didn't work out. So now I'm using the child to get even with you. Cause it's just like, look at all the damage it's caused just because you were trying to prove a point to the dad. Now your child is never going to be the same again anymore. And it's like, now you are going to be accountable because you were the one who was more present because you didn't allow the father to be around. And it's like, now you don't want to take accountability, but you had a role in the father not being involved. So right. I just feel like it's sad. And I feel like she does owe her son an apology. And I feel like they need to sit down and really have a conversation because I don't know if he actually has kids already, but if you're going to be a grandparent and like your child feels that you put them in a situation for them to be sexually abused, you can only imagine how your child feels about you being an active grandparent in their current children's lives because of your negligence. So Right. Someone said when the dad gave her specific instructions about Brian, it was her job to at least watch uh, to see what he was saying. That's why I say she's a little partially to blame because I feel like she was so vindictive into getting Drake's dad out of his life that it actually did more harm than good. Now, what parts surprised you in regards to some of like um, the parents' stories in the situation? Like, what about MJ and Brandy's story? Do you feel like she should have um, reported what happened to the police, or do you feel like she did the right thing by waiting until something happened and then cooperate? I was going to say, even though I believe she should have something, should have said something early, the reason why I understand why she didn't is because I would say back in that time, anytime you expose something and you don't have a bunch of people backing you up, they're either going to try and make you look crazy, try and right. off you, put you in a situation where you appear to be mentally stable and uncrazy. I would say because of the history of those producers trying to get trying to become the um, people who are in control of the conservatorships of children, I felt like she didn't have the, she didn't have the support that she needed to go in and like really make an impact because I feel like back then, I don't think all of these kids would have been ready to come out about what they were talking about because some of them couldn't even right. tell their parents. So imagine her being right. the only one to say something and the kids want to agree, but at the end of the day, the parents are still the ones who are like the main spokespersons for these children. So if the parents say, oh, I'm, my kid's not saying anything, like even like if you look at um, in media with music, like the Jackson 5 and everything else, a lot of people knew Michael Jackson and all these other kids were being abused, but because we were being entertained, like people didn't really care that much until we saw like the after effects of the abuse and where all the source of the entertainment came from, like the dark side of it. So... I feel like I understand why she didn't do it. And those people are very connected with like people like in police, police enforcement and everything else. Cause it wasn't like it was one person. You have to think about it. If there's like 10 pedophiles or whatever on a whole set, it's like, and they all have big connection, connections within the industry. It's like, they've all networked with people who are gonna vouch for their character. So it's just right. like, it's you so versus many them. And they're also men. It'd be different if it was like women, but I feel like her being a woman going a bit against that many men is like when she went for the job to bring her kid, it's like they know her address. They collect all this information because they're the ones who are paying you. Anybody could have like came to her house and like, you know, did something. So it's just like, if they weren't scared to do that to kids on set, imagine them having your personal information and being able to dox you or get like a celebrity hitman. Like when they were talking about Chris Rock and all these other celebrities who had like specific type of like hitman or like criminal men that they would have like when women would make accusations against them to like right. shut them up or not say anything. So I think now because of like technology, cell phones, now if you make an accusation against somebody, it's easier for you to have um, physical evidence of somebody having done something because back then you would need a witness to be able to right. like 
back up your story. And some people would say they would testify or say something. And then as the date gets closer, maybe they made an offer to that person and gave them an amount of money that would change their life situation. So it's just like between saying the truth and potentially getting a person convicted versus saying the truth, the person doesn't get convicted and they can come after you and then getting money. It's like, it put people in like a really weird moral compass where it's like, you want to do the right thing, but you're also trying to survive. I feel like now with the internet and everything else, it kind of creates a support system for these people. So I definitely right. do empathize. Any, yeah, I agree. Any final thoughts? Um, I would say these people need um, therapy. And I think that they need to do a class action lawsuit. And I think if there's anybody else who's still connected to these people or some of them who are still actively working within the industry, and never ended up going to court or being tried or actually like convicted of everything. I think the rest of the people should try and go the Jane Doe route. And then more people need to put in anonymous tips and maybe create an organization. Cause I think there's so many other people, but because of them feeling like ashamed or embarrassed, they probably won't say anything, but I definitely do think they need to be compensated. And Nick either needs to be dismantled or needs a complete rebrand. Yeah, definitely. Thanks so much for calling in. You're welcome. And everybody like, subscribe, and stay tuned on the channel because a lot of great things are happening here. And I love your channel. Yeah. Everybody. That way. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Make sure y'all hit that like button, please. That smoke you want, you just lit up that. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, because I thought I was like, wait, how did that? Okay, I, uh, somebody earlier was like, uh, what do you guys want Ariana to exactly say? Just, I just feel like she needs to put a statement out that says that she sympathizes with some of the stuff that the people went through. But it could be of two reasons why she's not saying that. One, because her management's not letting, letting her to. Or two, she could have went through some of the same exact stuff that some of those people are saying on that docuseries. So it's either one or two reasons she's not speaking out. I did see that comment, though. Like, hey, what is going on, Naya? Oh, not ready. Okay, what is going on, Asha? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, well, I do have a, a most, like, uh, sorry. <laughs> I really <laughs> wanted to speak on the Ariana part, just because mm -hmm. while I do understand what people are saying, just, like, given her stardom and all of that, I feel like, regardless of anything, it's wrong to urge victims to, like, come out and speak on something that they might not be ready to speak about. And she has such a big platform and so many eyes on her that that could just like, it just feels like a muddy water to be like, Oh, you have to say something. You have to say something like Drake didn't say anything until now. And that happened over like, Ten plus years ago. that is a good point. Yeah. So to be like, Oh, you say something, speak on this. When we have the videotapes, we know that she was put in some sticky situations. It's kind of just, I don't know. I don't see that for her, but also something that I've known for a while now. Her one of her best friends, Liz Gillies, the um girl who played Jade, she's mm -hmm. now married to one of the producers. I think for the music on Victorious, and he's like mm -hmm. in his fifties or something like that. Like as soon as she turned eighteen, they started dating, and I've always thought that that was kind of weird. And then they got married like shortly after that, so. I've, I don't know, I've always sort of been aware of the fact that there's some weird stuff going on in Nickelodeon, like, I grew up watching a lot of that sort of stuff, and remember being in school and people being like, oh yeah, no, but like, Dan Schneider has a foot fetish, and that's why they do all that weird stuff with this, like, it was just really normalized, and that was right. just kind of weird. And what she's referring to, you guys, is Liz right here, this is who she's married to uh, now, she was on, of course, Victorious. If you guys don't remember, and this is the guy she's married to. So he was probably around, what, 40s, 30s when she turned 18? Yeah, like a lot older than her. And they worked together on the set. Just, it, it's 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 pretty weird. I, I remember, like, growing up and when they used to do those, like, Disney sweepstakes and stuff so that you could get a chance to be on the show. I used to beg my mom every single time, like, please take me, please take me. I want to go, I want to go. I'm so glad that right. <laughs> you're like glad that can go through. Yeah, right. 
just I mean I feel like I, I although I want people to speak out I feel like the follows and the little things like that show sort of what side that they're on the part, yeah the only person who I really do think needs to say something is um Josh Peck but mostly just because he's been on TikTok like react like recording himself to weird sounds and like just acting weird about the situation. He did speak he did reach out to Drake. That's what Drake said. And Drake said to uh keep off of him, like be be nicer to him because he did speak out. So mm. just to let you know because I heard on like his podcast he was still a big advocate for Dan Snyder. Like, because this has been going on for years, like rumors of Nickelodeon and stuff. But I've seen him on things where they've asked him about it. And he's like, we still have like a really good relationship and things like that. Right. Or at least last I heard, I could be wrong. But I, the whole system is messed up. The whole system is messed up. That Amanda Bynes irked me. Why is she on set hugging on this man and massaging him and nobody's asking questions? And I think right. that probably because of her whole history they glossed over it but i think that it's really weird that they segued from like the massages and their very close relationship to her trying to get emancipated and like mm -hmm. his role in that i feel like there was probably more to that story that we don't know because what surprised me is sam not doing the the, the documentary because she already has said some things in her own book so the fact that she didn't do this docuseries that kind of shocked me too what do you think I think she's said she's done her part. Like yeah. she was a, a big pioneer in the whole like bringing attention to the situation and sort of putting eyes on it. So I like in the book, my friend read it. I didn't read it, but he was telling me about a lot of different stuff that she said in it. So I think that she's kind of just like wiping her hands of the situation, which I get. Like it seemed like a super traumatic time for her, like not just with Dan Schneider, but all the stuff with her mom. So, right. Yeah, now, really what expect. part surprised you besides the Drake Bell situation? Speaking of Drake Bell, this is what he had to say about uh, Josh Peck. Hey, what's up, guys? I just want to uh, clear something up. Um, I've noticed a lot of uh, comments on on some of Josh's TikToks and some of his posts, and I just want to let you guys know that um, this is really, uh, you know, processing this and going through this is a really emotional time, and um, a lot of it's very, very difficult. Uh, so not everything is put out to the public, um, but I just want you guys to know that he has reached out to me and um, it's it's been very uh, sensitive, um, but he has reached out to, uh, uh, to talk with me and, and help me work through this and, and uh, has been really, really great. So, I uh, just wanted to let you guys know that and to uh, take it a little easy on him. Hey. Okay, so that's what he said a little bit earlier in regards to the whole situation. Oh, that, now, that makes me sad. It's all so sad. Yeah. I mean, like, what surprised me most, I guess, I thought that they, not that Jeanette McCurdy wasn't a part of it, but I thought that mm -hmm. da Daniela Monet probably... Right should have had some things to say i think that they should have had somebody for victorious if they could have got it because i think right. that around the victorious iCarly era or when things started to get really weird also gibby like the the right. whole remember that clip of him and it was like this was supposed to be a stuntman and it wasn't a stuntman is when he fell from the ceiling right and like body flopped onto the floor right there's just so much stuff like I don't know. I wish they could have gotten somebody from every show, but to be honest, I think that the documentary was pretty thorough and like I don't have any They did a like, great job. Really they really did do a great job with the storytelling. Like that they did their big one with that docu series because it's like you learned a lot that you really didn't know before unless you really did your like deep 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 research. There was some stuff that like I was shocked at. Um so they did a great job with the docu series. I hope they maybe do a follow-up with other stars too and do like a part two and if they could do a disney one that would be amazing but i don't know if disney will even allow that to even come to light you yeah, know disney is ironclad a lot more powerful <laughs> yes you are not like you cannot get through the disney machine like they will stop every everything to not have that come out yeah but like and i, I feel like know. if if it was to be possible 
Chelsea would probably do it from Nassau Raven because she even made a TikTok saying that she can't wait till her NDA expires. So who knows mm. what she has to say? Yeah. Any mm. final thoughts? No, I'm really happy that you're covering this, by the way. I love the way that your channel is just like expanding. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love that y'all noticed in that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. um, uh, one person that she just mentioned, the caller just mentioned, is Danielle Monet. Now, she was on Victorious. If you guys don't remember, she played uh, Trina Vega. They said this was in 2022. She says that it's the latest Nickelodeon star to claim her time at the Children's Network was not entirely wholesome behind the scenes. The actress who played Trina Vega on Victorious from 20. 10 to 2013, discuss her perspective on the work conditions faced by young actors under former network Dan Schneider. Though her time on the show was, for the most part, very PC, funny, silly, friendly, chill, she told Insider there were moments every once in a while that made her feel uncomfortable. Do I wish certain things like Demi didn't have to be so sexualized? Yeah, 100%. She pointed to a specific scene in which she had to eat a pickle while applying lip gloss. After filming, she told Insider she reached out to Nickelodeon executives, expressed concerns that the scene may be too sexual to air on the show. Despite her concerns, the network opt to air anyways, Monet told Insider. I'll try to see if I can find that scene. I think I remember which scene this one is. What is going on, Cinnabons? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What's up, what's up, what's up? Oh, I'm so excited. Um, So I have so much to say. I'm trying to figure out exactly my thoughts. So I really want to start with the whole Josh Peck and Drake. So I mm -hmm. noticed that Josh Peck has always had this weird animosity towards Drake, but I think that's because when they were younger, of course, through their um, developmental years, Josh mm -hmm. was the butt of the jokes. He was right. always the fat jokes. Those were lazy times. If you were black, let's right. make back black jokes. If you were fat, let's make fat jokes. If you were a girl, let's make you're stupid, whatever, what have you. Right, sexist jokes. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> And right. I think that Josh took that to heart when Drake would really viewed him as a true friend. So when Drake wasn't invited to his wedding, he took that personally. And then they had this huge riff. And I feel like when they tried to have the reboot, um, excuse me, reboot, <laughs> mm -hmm. and Josh was ahead of it, he called it Josh and Drake. And he wanted to be the exact opposite. He wanted Drake to be, you know, the adult who peaked in high school, he was a loser, he was broke, this, that, and the third, and Josh be, you know, the nerd that leveled up, that had more money, and Drake wasn't feeling that, because he's right. like, why would you want me to be the butt of the joke? And in Josh's mind, he's like, well, that's what I was all these years. Right. And, and I feel like he's always had that animosity towards him, and I think now he reached out to Drake just because he recognizes that everybody views Drake as his victim, because he is, to a certain extent, he really is, He's also a abuser yeah. in his own right, but we'll leave that where it's at. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like because of this, he's always had this weird animosity towards him. That's why he said all those like weird TikToks and sound bites and this, that, and the third. Because even when he was defending Dan Schneider, of course you'll defend Dan Schneider. You were a fat white straight kid. He related to you. Right. He loved you. Cinnabon, is you still there? You yes, muted I'm yourself. So sorry. Yeah, you just muted yourself. I'm so sorry. Um, so it was just a terrible thing. And I noticed I really wish Amanda Bynes would come and speak out because everybody wants to know what's going on with her because she reminds me so much of Britney Spears. And I think Britney Spears, she was such a Disney kid, her, Justin Timberlake. There was a lot of young stars that were, you know, whatever may have happened to them. I, I can't speak because that's their story to tell. But even with all that, I'm sorry, this might sound jumbled, but <laughs> even with all that, I remember back in 2016, the first person who actually spoke out about all that was Angelique Bates. Um, Angelique Bates, she had talked about how her mother was very physically abusive and everybody on set knew. And nobody mm -hmm. said shit because there was a lot that was going on on set. She never specified right. what, but I was like, oh, all that? Like, this is my childhood. I never watched Victorious, but I watched all that. I watched I Carly, I watched Amanda show and I watched Drake and Josh. I feel right. like Victoria. Now do you remember cool. some of the racial stuff that was on all that? Yes. And looking back, I didn't realize it was racial because we're children. We don't view race the same as an adult would. Right. You know, we just see jokes like either it's funny or it's not. And if it's funny, we'll laugh, whatever, what have you. 
Now the Captain Big Nose, did you remember that? Because that was crazy. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is this? Captain Big Nose, and even then when they showed the clip of him, I was like, you are going to put this prosthetic on this black child and exaggerate his nose? You might as well have called him a jigaboo. Please stop. Right. That's why I was Please. surprised they didn't ever Captain Jigaboo. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Not Captain Porch Monkey, please. Like, it was just <laughs> terrible. But there was so much that was going on back in those times. And even, oh, the clip with Leonardo DiCaprio. When I saw that, it freaked me out when um Brian Peck was rubbing his arm. And I'm like, is that why Leonardo DiCaprio can't date anybody past 25? Is that why? Can we talk about it? No, I don't know. Yikes. But, <laughs> once again, that's Yikes. not what, something Yikes. else Yikes. I can Yikes. say. No, you hit no points, though. You hit no points. <laughs> Now, what story surprised you besides the Drake Bell situation? Uh, the MJ story um, in regards to um, the uh, Brian Peck writing the serial killer. Like, what parts kind of shocked you besides the Drake Bell situation? The people who were on the side of Brian Peck. All these people writing notices, and they're all trying to come out like, oh, we didn't know. We didn't know. Anytime a child accuses a man or a woman, I'm not going to specify because it does happen. Anytime a yeah. child accuses an adult of sexual misconduct and that or sexual abuse of that way, you don't want to do your own research. You're instantly going to side with the adult just because you know them. I don't care who you are. If and I, not even if that, he was he was caught on voice recording admitting it. So it's not oh, even oh, an accused. Are we being recorded before. right now? Yes. Please, please. I'm like, please, just hang it up. Like, and they're yeah. all trying to come out like, oh, we're so sorry. We had no knowledge of this. You were 35. I am 26. And I know for a fact, anytime a child is saying that this person did something to me, I will believe that child 10 times out of 10, first and foremost. Right. Because like, Loki just thinks of something and lying on something like that so deep for no reason. Because that's like, that's embarrassing for them. It, yes. And they're trying to say the hey. adult. Right. Just like that whole interview. I didn't watch the interview with T-Bone and Dan Schneider. I don't care what he has to say. I'm so sorry. Because even the little quotes that he had, they were basically trying to deflect. Like, everyone saw what I did. I had several people sign off on it, which was true. I will give him that. That was very much so true. It does not mean that you were not wrong. It just means other people were wrong with you. Boom. Right. Simple. Like, <laughs> I feel like... Now, did you, you, did you watch I Carly Know Who T-Bone Is? Yeah, of course. I know he was the nigga with the bagels. Right. So, <laughs> did it shock you to? Because I know you say you didn't watch it, but did it shock you to see that he was the one interviewing him? Because that part shocked me. Oh no, I watched our Carly. I just didn't watch Victorious. That was the only one I didn't watch. Right. Um, it just shocked me because I felt like he was being used, and I don't think he knows he's. I feel like now his family probably telling him, "You know that nigga used you, right?" Because like watching it in full, I want you to watch it after you get off of this. It's only 20 minutes. You can tell he was very much used. It is sad. I'm not going to give him that much grace because I feel like he's old enough to realize the game, especially as a black actor in Hollywood. He should yeah. understand when someone's a token, when someone's being used for something because he understood like, hey, I'm a token funny nigga that just pop in for a joke or two and then I'm gone. Nobody really knows anything about my backstory or T-bone, whatever, what have you. I just show up with the bagels. I make you laugh. <laughs> And I feel like he probably hasn't had that much work done in a while. So he's like, I'm going to take what I can get. Or at least that's what right. I'm initially thinking. I could be very much so wrong. I will happily say when I'm wrong. But I'm not going to give him that much grace because I feel like he's I think it was the check. Better. I think it was a fat, fat, fat check to do it. Thank you. And yeah, I'll be honest, I don't think Dan Schneider would pay. <laughs> I was about to call him a nigga again. But I don't think he would pay <laughs> a black person that much. Because that's why I feel like a lot of the women on set, oh, that thing with the ladies, where they had to split the check, and that one the lady writing. with the longer yes. hair, and she it, like told the story for the other lady, that was so I, mean Her name is Jenny. I don't like Jenny. I'm sorry. Let, let's talk, let's bring up pictures, because we let's, talk about the people. Her, her, right here. I don't like that her. Was, I don't like her either. That was so mean-spirited. I could tell that Dan pinned it pin them against each other against each so other they, yes yes so the where they had to like compete like oh whoever makes me you laugh can harder tell 30 extra Dan, dollars 
Christy was not Dan's favorite, and that's why she was let go first. And Jenny would probably play both sides and was two-faced and would kiss Dan's ass until she didn't like some of the stuff that he would do to her. But I'm I'm going to say what? something. It might gag you. That's what I think. So uh -huh. I've always had this, this theory about how fat men hate fat women. And that's why when he got found out, when he got called by the Writers Guild, he immediately yes. went to her and said, bitch, did you tell them? Right. <laughs> because he knew it was her. He knew it was her. <laughs> and I'm like, I've always had that thought. Fat women, I'm like, fat men hate fat women. They truly do. <laughs> but oh, I'm, man. I'm trying to think, is there anything I else? I was right also there? surprised that Mr. Dan's weight loss, okay? Mr. Nigga took on that bitch. No, he's. I'm, I'm not surprised by that. Because what do you have to do after everyone outs you? People hate you. You suck. You can't go out to eat in public no more. So you can't order all the Chick Fil A, all the Wendy's, all the McDonald's you fucking want. So people see you. So you got to cook at home. You got to stay at home. You bubbly bitch. You got to stay at home. <laughs> stay down. <laughs> Where are you two? Okay. Now, I also want uh, one last thing I wanted to, to ask you. Who do you think that hasn't spoken out before that you feel like is going to speak out? Either from any cast, from Victorious, iCarly, all that? Hmm. I feel like I should have expected this. I've been listening this entire time, and I ain't thinking that mm -hmm. answer yet. Um, I want to say Amanda Bynes, but no, no, no. Let me, let me really think for a split second. I, I do not to... think she will speak out. I'm surprised you guys are saying that. She does not want to be involved in anything with Hollywood. She's made that a lot clear a lot of times. I, I would I don't think she's ever gonna say anything. Her and Jeanette McCurdy, if anyone has read her book, she said, I don't want to be in front of the cameras. I want to be behind it. In fact, she even said something about how they had made an agreement where she was supposed to film, uh, she was supposed to be director of a few episodes of Victorious, but Ariana Grande didn't want that. And they told her, hey, we know we promised you this, but we changed our mind because someone said that they won't feel, quote unquote, someone. But anyway, right. I wanted to be someone who like either hired people or I don't know, maybe it'll be some other parent or no, I don't want it to be a parent for someone who's high of importance, like someone who someone didn't expect. Like someone who's been working on Nick through across a lot of shows or even someone who's been a trainer or director, which those people, they do not get the sympathy, sympathy that they really want from me. I'm so sorry. You were grown as hell watching these pe watching these kids be abused. Please right. stop. <laughs> That's why I don't feel a lot of sympathy for the writers. I I. I do, but then again, I don't. I'm sorry. It's because I, I could see they were complacent a lot, especially Jenny. I'm on your ass, Jenny. No shit. Like, <laughs> I, you know, I just feel like, no, some of them were really complacent. And like, it's like when things got bad for them, that's when they're like, oh my God. But it's like, come on now. It wasn't bad when you, you feel me? Like, if, if the only time you're outraged is when you abandon ship, no one cares what you're saying because you really weren't there when it mattered. You weren't there right. at the height of what you had. And even then, as the women, y'all had no height. Y'all was splitting checks. Please stop. <laughs> and, right. and this isn't even trying to be harder on the women. It's just, I feel like so many people failed all these people. Their parents failed them. Their agents failed them. The people on stage failed them. The writers failed them. The directors failed them. So many people failed them. Yeah. Well, it's uh, Any final thoughts? Um, damn, my mind's blank. <laughs> um, I say like and comment, subscribe, turn on the post notifications. Period. Uh Night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what is going on? Uh, black as hell. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, yay. So, I want to first off and say. This has been really triggering for a lot of people. Like I've been like trying to talk to like friends and family about this and they're like, this is a bit much. Like right. it's very triggering. Um, so. Start, like, let's I, start off with uh, the Drake Bell situation. Like were you surprised at the revelation? And also did you watch the interview with Tebow? I didn't watch the interview. Um, I saw clippets. I didn't want to watch the interview. I was so disgusted that he did it. Cause I'm like, I don't even know who he is. I had to look him up. And I'm like, out of everyone, 
I was like, I don't know. Oh, you didn't know who Tebow was. No. And I'm like, (laughs) out of everyone, you're going to have him interview. And I I already knew what it was about after that. So I was like, I'm not even going to watch. But what surprised me the most about this Drake Bell was that his girlfriend's mother was the one who peeped something. Like, that gave me chills. Like, for someone to just notice, like, whoa, this is, it's like, God bless her heart. Because it's yeah, like, how many sure. red flags has been in other adults' lives to notice stuff? Even the dad said, like, I peeped stuff and made me uncomfortable. So it's like, out of everyone, the, the girlfriend's mom is the one who's like, uh-uh, I need to see what's going on. That right. that that was, like, chilling to me. Um, like, the fact she said, come in the room, like, what's going yeah. on? Like, yeah. That was, no, that part was sad. And it's like, God bless her heart. And I know he probably like is thankful for her because it's like, where would he be? Or where would anybody be right now if that didn't happen? You know? What do you think about the mom in the whole situation? Because a lot of the viewers are blaming the mom for not being as assertive and attentive to Drake and all of this whole situation and sort of blame oh, her. Oh, I blame her to 100%. Because if I, I'm a mother, if someone is saying this makes me uncomfortable because the dad said, okay, whatever you do, this is a, this is a situation. I'm going to watch that situation just because someone right. brought it up. Even if right. I, I don't care if someone's like overreacting, if you bring up, say someone is acting funny, I'm going to be watching and I'm going to like, what is being extra careful? What does that do? You know? Right. Ma- Especially that, that way step. because... The way that the dad described it, he told the mom that he feels like it's something weird and going on in a, it's in a sexual manner. It wasn't like, oh, he's talking bad about him. No, it's like a he's touching him, and I don't exactly. like it. Like that isn't something that you're like, oh no, you're being over dramatic. Like, come on now. But like, like someone else, other people have said, when parents are wanting to live out their dream, they decide to ignore things or see things because, you know, oh, my child is go- having this like star, you know, the dad is jealous or they convince themselves other things. But I totally blame her. I totally blame her. And she should sit there and blame herself because you, you took him from the dad who said something about it. And look, it, it was right. He was right. Yeah. You know? It's sad. And I do wish she was a part of the documentary. I know some people feel as if she should have kept private, but this is a big moment in his life, and he's revealing something that he hasn't told the world in, like, decades, and probably his family don't even know. So the fact that he wasn't, she wasn't there to, like, support him, I think it was telling. It's telling. Well, because very she probably is val- very feels very guilty and it's yeah. shameful. She wouldn't want to get up there. I'm surprised the mom of the little girl who said that man sent that video of him Jack uh, doing what he was doing to her young daughter and she did nothing. I'm surprised she came up on and admitted that. That's disgusting. I don't care what it's about. Some A grown man sent that to your child? She wasn't even 10 yet. Two digits. That's disgusting. Yeah, it was, na- it was nasty to watch. Um, <laughs> I, she has a lot of like gusto to go up there and admit that because a lot of people wouldn't have did that like y'all know that 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 designer who had her hands we didn't see her in her face oh exactly (laughs) she had her hands like you know the movie it's like a movie called hands where like all the movie is just hands moving around all we saw was her arms and hands and her cloth and we don't even know what she looked like she didn't even show her face so the fact that that mom showed her face like that took a lot of bravery because some people would never do that well, I still, I still, I'm looking at her like, hmm, you like, why didn't you go to the police? That's horrible. If someone did that to my child, I'd be so angry. The police yep. would be the least of his worries. <laughs> yeah. Now, what part of it, uh, besides the Drake Bell thing, sort of surprised you, uh, of course, and also this uh, mom situation, like, were you surprised at any of the racial stuff and also some of the clips that they showed between the docuseries? I don't know if you were watching earlier, I even showed a clip of something that was shown in Victorious where she's doing, um, a, like, a, what is it called? The In the middle of the sun, like a sculpting thing sitting on the boy's lap. Yeah, see, I, I was a Disney kid. 
And then Thanks. also when, yeah, but when Wizards of Waverly Place and Victorious, all these came out, I was a little bit older. So like Zoe right. 101 was up when I was younger. And I used to wish I was Zoe 101's best friend because I was obsessed yes. with Britney Spears. Yes. So Everybody seeing, wants to be on that campus. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. So seeing this, but I'm like, dang, I wish you guys would have touched more, talked more about Zoe 101. I'm like, really? You guys, that's it? You're not going to talk more? Oh, they skimmed. That's why I said we need a part two. They skimmed over Victorious in detail. They skimmed over iCarly in detail. And they skipped over Zoe 1 in detail. We got a lot of all that. And, uh, and, then, Amanda also, Bynes told and then also, like you said, with the Amanda Bynes, they kind of jumped over the conservative and then bloop, and then this. And then it's like, OK, but what was between Amanda and the conservative ship? And like, yeah. what was their relationship to get to that? Yeah, I, that they're was missing people there that were mm -hmm. there to tell the story. So if they had people that are more if they had a lot more people that are willing to participate in the docuseries, I feel like it would have been like six, seven parts. And then did you see, did you see, you know, the Sloan Bell, the um Bella the uh psychic? You know her? Yes. Did you see her video that she did about this situation? This you're talking about Chase uh Tracy Brown? No, Salone Bell, the one who came out with the Kim Porter stuff, the white lady with the blonde hair, psychic. Oh, and she had like that little wrap around her head. No, it's just like short blonde hair. You gotta send me that because I seen okay, a video I will. because she yeah, was talking the, and she was talking lady. about those subliminal uh, tweets that um and other stuff, but the subliminal tweets that Amanda Bynes put out, and I guess she said something about John Travolta doing something yeah. to her. And I was now like, somebody just Whoa. said, Pierre, do you think the guy from the last scene and the uh, last scene from the first or the second episode, do you think he knew? I guess I feel like you're talking about him. He, he's another one that I'm not too keen with because you were there. Which you one? Seen, the director? Yes. Yes, that's what and I'm And what saying. bothered me, he seems sad that he did not have a friendship with Dan Schneider. Yeah, Fuck yeah Dan like Schneider. you're mad Why do you Dan care? Schneider did you di dirty instead of fired you the way he did. Instead of like how he treated all these these children, do you know who That's Dan Snyder's wife is? To me. Do you know who Dan Snyder's wife is? No. Okay, so you know that video of Patty De LaBelle and Tyra Banks, and the mm -hmm. woman is like, "Don't eat the paper," and Patty's like, "What are you talking about? I'm not gonna eat the paper," and she's like getting mad. Do you remember that video? Yes. That's his wife. That's uh, Dan Snyder's wife. Oh, are they still together now? Um, uh, from the videos I've seen, yeah, I guess, but the, she's not really, I don't know. I haven't heard of a divorce, but that's his wife. So that character to me, he was very suspect in this whole Dr. series because it's like, he was trying to make it seem like, you know, things were, some things were all well. Yeah. And that bothered me. Oh, and, and like then that. another thing that really lying. scared me was the fact that Homeboy was messaging uh, pen pals with the murder. Or the M yep. the yeah sorry the mm -hmm. um that person on a library yes that mm -hmm. is scary pen pals and you work with children that was that's it's just but the thing about the race I I understand what the um the one the young the man whose mom was a psychic that you watch yes his mom you know how he said I'm still dealing with like race issues that I dealt with. Yeah. My parents put me and my sisters in a Catholic school with all white people and from kindergarten to eighth grade. And it was only four kids, me They're and my right. sisters. Yes. And adults were treating us like horribly. And we didn't understand because we were young kids. So right. I like, I know exactly what he's talking oh, about. Oh, yes. like, it messes you up self, your self esteem because yes. you're like wondering like why Am I being treated you feel like a child? Sometimes not good enough? Exactly. I went through the same thing in middle school. Like I told you guys in that other video, I was in the magnet program. Straight white kids. There were some classes I was like the only black kid in there. Like, y'all don't know how traumatizing that is. Oh they my make God. and they oh. make you feel, and then you were saying in the other video about those that white humor that is just kind of like oh, yeah. really weird. Like I literally was told I was a slave, and I was like, I don't understand why that is funny to funny, you. Funny, right. <laughs> Like, uh, if, um, is it me that's because I don't find it funny? Am I the problem? Because I don't it see how that's funny. It used to make you think that, like, you're crazy. You're like, exactly. it's so wrong with me. <laughs> like, 
I'm I'm the issue. Like I and I'm like I don't I don't care how good the school is. My child needs to be around people that look like them because right. that will give them lasting issues. Yeah, and, it does. It yeah. does. It really does. Any final thoughts on the docu series? No, that literally was all it. Thank you for having this space for us. I love talking yeah, no about problem. this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Night. Good night. All right, what is going on, Big Draco? Not the little one. Okay, okay, I'm so glad because I really did just say this. I don't want to sound crazy when I say this, but like, uh -huh. I need people to understand that the parents and the like, all the predators involved, like, they're to blame too. But I think like it's a bigger issue, like the way that money is just so like important to people in general that they're willing to do anything, including sacrificing their own kids just to get it. Right. Because even with like Amanda Bynes' parents and everything, like I could tell like obviously how close they were with Dan. Like clearly they were like okay with their daughter going alone with this grown man because they were getting paid. Right. But like the boy whose mom like was really involved and always asking these questions, he they kept mentioning how like he really wanted to get them out of the hood and i know like he was saying like the stuff that he was doing was weird and he was uncomfortable but like i could tell like he was basically trying to say that he was willing to go through whatever just to get the check and get them wherever they needed to go right and i really wish like uh i just wish things would change where people didn't have to be so reliant on money that they're willing to do whatever and say whatever because like even the writers oh yeah they're not uh, they get nothing from me the little white lady tears. I don't want to say this because I don't want to sound rude, but uh, I think the way that white women turn on each other and turn on their like younger counterparts like is yes. disgusting. You're I don't understand how Jenny. <laughs> yes, I don't understand how these two like the disrespect started very early. And personally, me as somebody who's quit a lot of jobs, I wouldn't take that foolishness. Dang. I don't really understand why they thought it was like the, I understand she didn't want to work them jobs no more, and she had rent to pay, or whatever. But there's no way this was more worth it than not doing it. Like the whole thing where she had to bend over and pretend like she was getting taken from the back and still yeah. do it. And I'm thinking in my head like, oh, yeah, she's not going to do this. This is where she gets up and leaves. Right. I and gagged she when she said she it. did it. I said, oh, my God. My like, guys. I gagged. I really gagged at that part because and not even that. She was so embarrassed she didn't even tell the story that Miss Jenny told it for her. That's why I right. that really not like her. Because I'm like, that's really not your story. You could have briefed over the situation and said, oh, she made her do something uncomfortable. You described it in deep detail. And then when they asked her, they asked Chrissy about it. Like, she didn't really want to say, like, she did it. But, like, she did it. embarrassing. Like, yes. Uh, uh, oh, my God. Um... I also think that Brandy's mom, like, I just think a lot of them, I'm not going to say what I want to say because I don't want to risk my chances of getting into heaven, but I do think that some of them should be in a place where they experience pain all the time. You feel like there are lots of blame as to why some of their kids went through the stuff that they went through. Yeah, not just their own kids, but, like, the other kids. Like, I don't, like, we have no idea how many kids she, Brandy's mom could have saved right. had she said something. And right. how, like, I don't know if Brandy's okay right now. Like, the way they were talking about her in the documentary, it seemed like past tense. Like, something may have happened to her. Or she just doesn't, like, want to be, like... I believe chill. she's still alive and just doesn't want... She didn't want to be a part of the IQ series. And yeah, I really like, I totally get that. People could dig up her information, find out who she is. Yeah. Oh. Mm hmm Because her pictures were being plastered all over that IQ series for, like, half of that... I think it was the second or third part. Like, half of that part, it just kept showing her picture. So, it's like, oh. Uh. So, what do you think about the whole Drake Bell situation? And did you watch T-Bone's interview with Dan? So, I didn't watch the T-Bone interview because I just didn't want to give Dan, like, especially because it was on his, like, pages. Like, I didn't want to give him the views or the attention. Like, I already knew it was going to be some foolishness. The fact that it was 20 minutes, like, kind of added to that. So, I really didn't want to see it. Um, y'all not missing out on much. All y'all missing out is... Him doing like an emotional cry, Tebow literally playing Tebow. Like I swear, <laughs> he it, that wasn't the character he played. I'm telling y'all, that was him. He they literally told him, "Hey, get a stick of donuts and, and make us die." <laughs> I swear to God, I was like, "What is this?" I just feel like, oh, like I'm tired of everybody selling out. We're too old to sell out. He's way too old to be selling out. Like I just yeah. don't like it. That was um, the whole Drake Bell thing, like, obviously his parent, his mom failed him, mostly, obviously the big one. 
I know his dad, like, I wish, I know he wish he could have done more, but, like, I don't know if there is. I mean, technically, there could have been something he did. Like, I like how the other boy's mom, like, she was asking a lot of questions, and I would have hoped that if it reached to a crazy point, she would have just told him to leave. Like, I feel like I understand, like, Drake wanted this big thing. Like, he wanted to be famous. He wanted to have all this. He said he still enjoyed the fun parts he had. But it's like, if I was a parent, like, I would just be like, you're not doing this. Right. Um, I think what else now do you think so do you put of course I, I think you, you you gonna agree you do you put a lot of the fault on the mother of Drake or do you feel like um she was so manipulated by Brian Peck because that could have been the case because he did have a close relationship to the mom to the point where she believed everything he told her yeah, I believe that she was definitely manipulated. Obviously, her relationship with her husband, like, she wasn't going to probably trust anything she he said because she doesn't like him, but she'll obviously trust this man who's a, kind of a stranger, but, like, she thinks her son's come to around, so she'll think that's okay. But at the same time, when Drake was like, yeah, my mom, she just didn't feel like driving, so she didn't, I'm like, what do you mean you didn't feel like driving? That's what I does. What may be what like were you me. doing? I'm trying to figure out what were all of these parents. I'm not saying that they were like poor or anything or like because I don't know what they were doing if they had jobs that they had to be at. But the way this is different back then, I'm sorry. Let's right. Not, like, right now, okay, I can see a parent saying that now, but back then, come on now. Right. Apart what were you all doing the all the time that you couldn't drive nowhere to take your son that was really making all the money? He's probably making more money than you. The wages weren't the same, but I'm sorry. Like, come on. I just now, don't man. know why, like, her excuses weren't enough. She should have been there in the documentary. Obviously, she didn't want her lashings, but she's still going to get them. Right. Regardless of her being there or not, I just feel like the point of her being there in the docuseries would have been in more support for Drake than her trying to prove us that she wasn't aware of anything. Like, to me, her being there would just be having Drake be happy, like, hey, my mom's here supporting me. Cause now I'm telling the world everything that nobody knew, cause yeah. the whole world didn't know anything about this. So, yeah. Now That's what? It, man, yeah, me either. Like I had no idea like any of this had happened to him. Like I was so shocked by the whole yeah. thing. Thank God I wasn't a huge Jake, Drake and Josh watcher, cause that would have ruined my image. If something the whole thing, out, like I, I unfortunately can no longer watch any of these Dan Snyder shows, and yeah. I hope like. In the future, like if I have children, like they don't start playing those as reruns or something, I'm just gonna turn it off. But still, I, I can guarantee you, Nick won't play a lot of those shows in reruns for a long period of time. They're gonna be playing that girl Lele and SpongeBob for like <laughs> because the, the only way, like I was home now. <laughs> yeah, the only way, like I was born in like 2002, so like I didn't really see all that and stuff while it was airing. But I've seen reruns so much that I basically know the show, like. I didn't even know, but like I had seen, like I knew when Amanda Bynes came on, I knew when Nick Cannon came on the show, and I knew that little black boy who did the nose thing, like I knew he was on the show, but I had never seen that sketch before in my life. Right. And I was so like, oh, this is going to be racist because the huge nose, but then they did the thing about his shoulders, I was like, yeah, that's pretty bad too. Now, do you think uh, Nick Cannon will speak out? Now, this is an interesting one I never threw out there. Nick Cannon was big. He's Nick and I. He's Nick, 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 Nick. Do you feel like he will speak on any of this? Because I don't think he will. I don't think he will either. But I do think that stuff that probably happened while he was a child actor is why he's so, like, I wouldn't say hypersexual because, like, I don't literally know what he does. But, like, it probably does he explain. He has seven baby moms. You can say that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Like, it probably does yeah, contribute a lot. That versus Wild talking about, you know, girls, Big Debbie Cake, say he going to get Johnson pregnant. You, that's oh, yeah, he was going to give Michelle pregnant on that last episode. Right, right. It's fair to say that. It's fair to say that. Yeah, I think that probably does have a lot to do with it. Mm. And I hope that, I don't know, he doesn't like, the whole thing with, like, Amanda and Jeanette, like, I don't know. They don't have to, I guess, if they don't want to. It's mm -hmm. not really, like, I don't, like, I don't think anyone needs them to speak. Well, not needs, but it would help if they did. But it's like, I don't think they have to, like, especially if it's going to mess them up. Right. Especially Amanda. Like, if bringing this up is going to mess her up so bad, like, she has to start all over again, then I just don't think she should do it. Yeah. Um, Amanda, I, do I feel think... like, shouldn't get involved with any of this. Because her mental space, her mental space, to me, you could already see on video, it's, it's fragile. So it's like... Yeah. Yeah, no. No. I think okay. if anybody were to speak up next, 
I guess it could be Daniela Monet. I think like a lot of people, like they were saying like Keenan and Kel. I know you mentioned Andre. Like I just fully believe that some stuff just didn't happen to certain people like at all. And they just never got to see it or never got to experience it. So it might be very hard to find people, people not just in the industry, but people who like, there's probably so many kids who thought they were getting their big break and never really made it and got abused and got thrown to the side and have never told their story because nobody knows who they are. Right. Um, but that's, I don't know. That's it. All right. Any, all right. Thank you so much for calling in, Draco. Of course. Love right. you. Night. <laughs> What's going on, ZM? Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, I just found out about this Drake stuff today. And I mean, I'm not surprised because I have been watching videos about Dan Schneider for a very long time now. Um, there was another YouTuber that he kept talking about him, um, Sloan. You know who Sloan is? Yes. Yeah, so um, the scenes that he had with Amanda Bynes in the bathtub, now thinking about it, because I used to, I, I was obsessed with the Amanda show. Like, so when I saw that she had the breakdown that she did, I was, I was devastated because I, I looked up to her. I really loved her. And I, I got a lot of my humor from her too, watching her, the Amanda show. So he did, yeah, like he did scenes with her, like, like in, in the bathtub. And I'm like thinking about it now. I'm like, that's disturbing. Like, right. the, I he could was only really have... called in a bathtub with her. That's what um she's referring to, you guys. Yeah, and that to me, you know, seeing now, like, she was very talented, I'll say that. Like, she could play multiple characters, and I wonder what is it that they, like, I wonder sometimes if she, if they, like, I don't want to say, like, maybe they probably drugged her up or something because... Yeah. I, it, it makes sense why she had the breakdown she did later on. And she even quit Hollywood because um, she did the movie She's the Man and she didn't like herself in that movie. Like she had a lot of insecurities. Um, so they really messed that girl up. And now think a lot of child stars, like looking back at it. Um, and also, like, I don't know if you know Hilary Duff. Yes. So Hillary of course, Duff. We know Hillary Duff. Of course, <laughs> That's of course. what I was a Disney kid. The Lizzie McGuire show was my ish too. This is why I said if they were to do a docu series like this about Disney, it would break me completely because those shows yeah. I like, I live by. <laughs> Seriously, me too. So like with Lizzie McGuire, right? I remember I saw a news article about her mom, and they were saying her mom is difficult to work with. And now thinking about it, I think that her mom just didn't play when it came to her daughter. Right. And I think that they try to taint her name. Like she was her manager for a very long time. And what and you notice Hillary, like, you know, she's like okay, like mentally stable. You don't see right. you don't hear anything about her in the news. So I really do feel like her mom did not play when it came to her. And Disney didn't like that because they like to get their hands on these child stars and do what they want with them. You know, we haven't heard anything really about Disney. I mean, look at Orlando Brown, but you know, I feel like a lot of the parents that, like Drake's mom, I'm sorry, you could have done more for your child. And you not showing up to the docu for the documentary just shows that you're not, you're, you're not, you don't care about him. Like, not saying that she doesn't care about him, but it's like, that shows a lot in your parent, like, in your parenting skills, because I, I this just This is don't... a big moment in his life. Like, nobody knew this. Yeah, nobody knew about this, so you should have been there. And also, now people are even questioning you more because it's it to me. It's like, are you upset that Dan Snyder is gonna see this, and maybe she doesn't want Je like? I feel like yes, because Dan Clint Dan said in the interview. I don't know if you watched it with Tebow. No, I can't believe I just said that with Tebow. Anyway, <laughs> he said that him and the mom had a close relationship, and the mom asked him to write a letter of what to say in the court with Brian Peck when he was on trial for the whole situation that went down. Oh my God. Yeah. So that's oh, starting. I to think it has to sense. do with that. That's a good point. And a lot of, and two of the actors I didn't know from boy meets world actually wrote letters to defend him. And they said they regretted it later on. I don't, you remember Sean and yes, yes. Him and the big brother. I forgot his name. It's been such a long time, but um, yeah, they, they defended him. And then later on, they said they regretted it because they were also groomed by him. A lot of, they groom a lot of these kids and this happens. I'm telling you is when the parents are not as hands-on. 
Right. And like, for example, look at Tia, uh, Tia uh, and Tamara Mori. Their parents were hands on. They didn't play when it came to their daughters. And look right. how they turned out. So you really, you really, you have the power to do it. But because these executives probably, you know, make them feel so comfortable to let their kids around them. And these are the consequences of it. And Dan Snyder, I, I honestly, if I was a parent and my kid was working on a show with him, I wouldn't not allow them anywhere near that man. That man looks like a creep just by looking at him. I could tell. Like, oh, yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't leave my kids around them. So, yeah, it was just surprising when I heard all the allegations. You guys already spoke about it. But, yeah, all the things that Drake said. And it makes sense just, like, the things that I've seen about him throughout the years. I That all is an effect from that. Because you see also, like, Lindsay Lohan, for example. Like, the, she looked at her periods, yeah. She had her periods, the, you know, too. It's like a lot, these kids, their childhood is taken away. And a lot of times it's, again, it's because of the parents are not really hands-on. If you were as hands-on, you would allow your kids to have a childhood. You would, wouldn't would allow these uh, Hollywood execs to come in and, and, you know, do what they want, do what they want with them pretty much. And, um, you know, and I think about like Shirley Temple too. You ever? Yeah. Yeah, like Shirley Temple, they had movies of babies acting like, you know, like walking in heels and like it's weird. It's like these fetishes these people had. They lifted through the movies. Like now, do you, like, what some of the Nick shows do you remember? Do you remember like any weird scenes that uh, stood out to you that now watching docu series you look back on and kind of remember? Because all the ones that stick out to me is The Victorious and also iCarly. Um, I never really watched those shows because I was a little like older at the time, but mm -hmm. I do remember all dad and they had like one of the scenes that was now thinking about it was like, yeah, it's very racist. Um, the ones with Nick and Ken, when they used to play like the girls with the nails and the hair, the big hair, and they used to work at a shop. I don't know if right. you remember that. That one to me was now thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, they... I could tell right now that that they were racist, like very well, like very much so. So that definitely something that I that I did notice. But yeah, I don't. Yeah, and also, oh, I did see scenes with Ariana Grande, like all these weird scenes that she, the voice that she would make all the time. I'm like, why is she doing that? Like, Her voice, not... yeah, I always found disturbing on that show. Like it, it was so light and airy, and it's like, yeah, it's like girl. They're... Yeah, like, she sounded like a little girl. I'm like, is she playing oh. out his fantasies or something? Because my brother, my little brother used to watch it, so I would sit down with him sometimes. And I'll be like, why does her voice sound like that? She sounds annoying. So, and I'm like, you know, it was just, it was just weird. But, yeah, so. And he would tell her, dad would tell her to make it sound lighter. Yeah, that, that's pretty, uh, like, yeah, he, like, it's his As his if it wasn't light enough. <laughs> I'm like, right? Ariana, like, he talks like a little girl. You're making it worse. Seriously, like he he outed himself with all of these things. Like people, like I understand these people have connections, so they're able to get away with things. Like I'm surprised that um, Peck was able to work in Disney after what he did to Drake, because he was able to work in the Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. So I'm wondering what they have to say about this, because like they protect each other. All of these people, they if you're connected, right. you're gonna be protected. But yeah. I mean, that's pretty much all I have to say. Now, what artists, not so what artists, what actors that haven't spoken out that you think will speak out in the future that you guess to make it will speak out or think will speak out? Um, maybe probably someone from Victorious or someone that worked closely with him. I don't think Amanda Bynes will just because she's not really like mentally there to handle all of this. Like pe right. people pressuring her to speak out or Ariana Grande to speak out. Can't tell someone to, when to speak out. You have to let them feel comfortable enough to do it. Like Drake, Drake took years and now he's speaking up. So, um, but yeah, I would say that, yeah, I think maybe someone from Victorious or, or maybe Zoe one-on-one -on -one, you know, because there's a lot of issues and in, in with just not only Dan Snyder, even between the actors. And I wonder sometimes why that is. Right. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much for calling in, Zim. No problem. Bye. All right. All right. What's going on, Nene? Oh, oh hold up a second. I'm on, I'm on the class. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, bet. Okay, okay. Hold on. 
So I got, first of all, I'd say I was actually in the middle of watching it again with my friend. And, Mm -hmm. okay. So first things first, I do want to say about Ariana Grande, I do feel like she does have to say something because has she not publicly supported Dan Schneider? So it's kind of like, at this point you have to, because if you have publicly supported Dan Schneider and now this whole thing is coming out, then stand on business, stand on business and say like what you have to say, especially with all the things that's coming out. Like she really has no choice. The way that her career moves are set up. She has the Wicked movie. She has her album that just came out. She's going to have to address this if she wants to have people. Cause it's like, they're not, people are not going to respect that. Personally, I don't respect it. If you don't say something, especially when it's hard because it's like, yes, she's a victim of this shit, but you have also publicly supported this man especially after the whole Jeanette McCurdy coming out with this situation and like everything that she's experienced, like, come on girl, like you, you need to speak out. Like, I'm so sorry that like, Oh, pressure this pressure that Amanda Bynes gets that grace. She does Ariana Grande. I'm so sorry, but you do not have that grace. You you don't got it. It's also the reason why I said that also it's her fan base. Her fan base is Mm -hmm. young. So what are you saying to them? You get what I'm saying? Um, no, exactly, exactly, exactly. These are kids that love to watch her old. Sh- there's like they're going through her entire discography like at a very young age, and they're gonna right. see all that. So it's like you need to you need to make a stance. You need to take, you need to take like not responsibility or accountability, but for not for some shit that you didn't do. The only she needs to be like, okay, yes, I. She does need to take accountability for publicly supporting him in the past. But other than that, just speak on your experience, say what you have to say, and then leave it at that. And then uh, after that, it's like, then you can be like, you can't ask me for more after that. You know what I mean? So at least stand on that and then make it clear that you don't like, because it's like, especially when she was so publicly like sexualized, like her and Danielle, like they were the most sexualized, I feel like in Victorious, like it was was obviously uh, Victoria and all them, but it's just like those two, especially like it was like extreme. It was very extreme with those two. And also I do want to touch on like the whole Drake Bell situation Mm -hmm. about like his past and stuff like that. I feel like, at this point, now that we know this, I feel like people should give him the grace of at least, like, let's actually read the court documents, see what is true, actually take a look at that situation, give him that grace of at least coming with knowledge of, because he is taking accountability for, for what he did, as far as it seems, from what it looks like, but it's just, like, I personally don't know enough about, like, I can't, because I was watching Sloan, the guy who, like, yeah, everyone knows he was even featured in the doc or the documentary, and oh. you even saw, um, because, I, yeah, I saw, like, a little clip, and I actually was watching a video of his, like, earlier. He said it, like, years ago, a couple years ago. He had, like, he was, I guess, messaging Drake's ex-wife. They wanted to come out with the story, and they wanted to, like, find a platform where he could share his story or something of that nature. So he knew about these things, and he had suspected, but it was never, like, really confirmed. So I feel right. like... And he and he's read all the court documents for all that. I feel like, you know, let's at least give Drake Bell like that grace of just like and actually like not come with misinformation and be like, oh, well, he did this. And I'm like, cause I personally don't know what he actually did do. And I don't think a lot of people do know what he actually did do, because like it was really just a lot of rumors that kind of went all around whenever all that shit popped off. And then he turned up missing and all that shit happened. So I feel like, especially now with more context, I feel like people really should give him that, at least that grace, especially that since he's willing to take accountability. Now, Josh Peck, I'm so sorry. This, we're like two hours in. Can I please cuss? Yeah. (laughs) I'm like, I'm I'm, 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 Okay. (laughs) This musty, crusty, dusty, motherfucking son of a bitch. I don't like this nigga. I don't like this nigga. I don't like him. I really, really don't. I, especially taking a look back at his humor, it was very much, oh, I'm a fat white boy uh, with the soul of a black woman type of tease. And it was not cute. It was not cute at all. Ooh. And that's why, like, m- 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 niggas, fuck with, niggas fuck with Drake because you can tell that he seems more like a genuine person. 
Josh right. was always a weirdo. He was always a weirdo. And I personally can say I have, I grew up fat. I grew up chubby. You know what I mean? I'm not like roly poly big, but I was always <laughs> a thicker gal, you know? Uh -huh. So okay. it's just like, and I have like lost a lot of weight and I also gained it uh -huh. back. So it's like people always commenting on my weight. I know how two ways it can you go. You look good, girl. When Don't you let them get to you. Thank you, thank Period. you. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's. Okay. I, I don't, I don't. Yeah, care. A, yeah. Like, you know, like, I, I, I wish you could see the ass, but um. Anyway, <laughs> it's like, it's like for me, it's just like the fact that it can go two ways when people get skinny. It can go like you, cause as a bigger person, even if you lose weight, you always, you always have that mentality of like, yes, I'm a bigger person. I'm a bigger person. And some people become a little more humble, but they still like, you know, just have like some of those insecurities of being big, but it doesn't, it shows like in a more humble way, or it can go another way where it goes to your, the fat, it, 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 you lose it. Not really, because it goes to your head. It could either disappear out of your body or it could go up to your head. That's what I think. And for him, it goes, it went up to his motherfucking head. All that, that, mm -hmm. that, what, what them goals people call the liquid gold, the liquid gold, right. it went to his head. <laughs> That's what he got going on up there. Oh, and man. Like, so you don't feel guy, like him reaching out to Drake was like genuine. You don't, you feel like that was just so that way people could kind of get off his back. Mm. Some motherfucking bullshit if I have ever seen it. Like, what do you mean? Like, he, he has never said anything really nice about him publicly. Like, I seen a video really of him, like, talking about, oh, I told him, go apologize to my wife. To my I wife, yes, Tony, yes, yes. Tony uh -huh. Soprano shit. Nigga, you was on nothing. You was not on no Tony Soprano shit. You was on, like, what are you motherfucking talking about? You was on some Peter Griffin shit. That, that's what you was on. Like, his, the little cut scenes like, that they be doing, that's like fucking walmart version like what? please don't ever say that shit because it, it's like he's just so aggravating like you have publicly publicly like supported dan schneider again and again and again to the point where jeanette mccurdy she even felt so uncomfortable when she was trying to speak her, her truth on your platform whatever she had to pull out of that podcast episode because he was being disrespectful because he was okay. being disrespectful so it's just like and his podcast publicly... is called the good guy Exactly. It's very Just much a big, nice guy. And, and what was y'all saying earlier? Like talking about someone said like, oh, like he, he wanted to be in the reboot. He wanted to be the 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 head hunt show, the HBIC. Um, and like what like and and he wanted drake to be like the low down like failed musician like it's just like what they poked fun at both characters for like in the show so i really don't understand like i remember even in the docuseries like drake was just like the way he presented it, like it was just like yeah like drake is just like this musician who thinks he's cool but he's not really that smooth like they both have their quirks like you know what i mean like it's just like so why are you trying to make it seem like this man has just trying to like punch down on you like he has not now that you like got a little bit of cloud and people you the people yeah. saw that you got skinny and like it's like please please, please and people please, the no. thing is when it comes to acting people have a hard time differentiating the character from the real person just because you're playing that mm -hmm. person doesn't mean you're that person exactly it's like, it's like that to me is already stupid in itself because it's like it's not real life guys <laughs> you know no, exactly no, exactly. And I just also want to say, like, oh, two people who can definitely go to hell. Well, there's a lot of people who can go to hell, honestly. Right, but right. but the mother, the no, like, she needs to go to hell. She needs to go to prison. I don't care. Child neglect, like, those, like, those laws exist for a fucking reason because she was explicitly warned. She was explicitly warned. And she, because she was too fucking lazy to go t take her son to auditions, that's literally when he got the opportunity to abuse him so what do you mean so what do you like yeah. it's like then you don't want to show up to on the documentary yeah because you don't want to want to get your fucking lashings but no 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 no, no. you got to stand on that shit and take accountability at least explain right. your side and say oh, yes this is the things that brian said to me this is how he is like show like come on like just so we can get some like, understanding as to why exactly. that even happened Exactly. But now we just assume that you just didn't care. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And now, and exactly. Now people are going to, because people are going to find out who you are. People are going to find you regardless. People are going to find you regardless, ma'am. And so you could have, you could have at least spoken up, but now you lost that. And, and I read that they gave everyone the opportunity to, to comment and say something 
um, for all the people who wrote letters in defense, they all gave them warnings. They all, they gave everybody a heads up and said, you can come speak and explain your side. They all, everyone who wrote a letter, they declined. They all declined. James Marston, which I was so disappointed in. I was so disappointed in. That was my white boy of the month like, a, a couple months back. <laughs> so I think a lot of them that wrote that letter were embarrassed after they actually knew what was going on. You never write a letter of support until you really know the actual situation because you could end up looking real stupid and supporting mm -hmm. the whole animal. Exactly. Like Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher, like they can go to hell too. Like they can go to fucking hell. Like what? Like now, who do you these, think is these... going to speak mm -hmm. out that hasn't spoken do... out in regards to this whole situation? I think Danielle is definitely someone who is most likely going to speak out, um, because she has already spoken out. So I don't. I think it's like pretty much like her. Um, I don't think like Leon. I don't think any of them are really gonna speak out. The only one I just because Ariana Grande like she's a big name. If she puts like if she at least like girl if you if you're not gonna speak with your words, speak with your actions. Get your lawyer on the motherfucking line and create a mm. lawsuit and then say and then don't say anything and be like the courts, my lawyers are speaking for me. That's it. You know what I mean? So it's just like yeah. that would be a smart way to play it. Get and and she's a big name. It's like Taylor Swift doing that lawsuit for the AI shit. You know what I mean? It's a lot of people are affected by it. Little girls are are killing themselves over, you know, this AI generation shit. Like, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like you get someone a big name like Ariana Grande to 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 shake some shit up and it'll you know some sh the table they'll really shake the table will really be shook that's all i'm saying but and yeah. i feel like but i also think it's a complication because of they did someone did mention about elizabeth gillies husband which oh my i'm such a big fan of elizabeth gillies like which i think it's just such a shame that like i do feel like she was groomed i do feel because i have oh, yeah. i love dynasty like oh my god like i'm so sorry no one can tell me nothing about that show but that was my shit the reboot of dynasty and um she was great in it and so and i did watch victorious the humor for nickelodeon never hit for me honestly but i did love the cartoons like all the danny phantom jimmy neutron like very fairly odd parents and like i watched i the only thing i would see sam. myself laughing a little bit in is i carly the other shows yeah for sam so like, exactly. yeah because sam like, wish yeah, you would go so wish you would be angry that's exactly. what I would find funny. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And then Zoe 101, just because I want to be on that campus, I was like, damn, I want to be there. But it was they were kind of weird on there too. Um, I didn't watch all that. It was like Nickelodeon was very just weird. Um, but yeah, like it just like for me, it's just like I think their relation her relationship with the well, because she's married to the nigga, like, um, I'm sorry, I keep saying nigga, but they all they crack us. Um Yeah, no, no, so, <laughs> Yeah, so she married to the cracker, and it's just it, it, it just complicates things because they're very very close. So I don't know if I think she values her relationship with Elizabeth Gillies because they go all the way back to like childhood days. Like they were on Broadway when they were little kids, so they literally grew up together. And I don't think that she would risk speaking in a way that would harm her relationship with Elizabeth oh, yeah. Gillies. So yeah, that definitely. also kind of like mixed into it, but. Honestly, I wish more people did speak out from Victorious and like all the other Nickelodeon shows, like besides like, and I think, oh, the Nessus classified, this classified people. Like I did watch that show. I'm not going to lie. Actually, I did like that show, but they was kind of weird on there too. But you know, like that one bite shit, I remember like, it, it's just, they, they are corny ass people. They've been moving real different ever since like this podcast, they're jobless. It's, it's giving unemployed, like. <laughs> it's giving like it's like FaceTime me if you that bored, babes. Like I'm so sorry. You were on TV a million years it is, ago. It's the way Sit that they were so down. quick to make that video. Like that the the thing had dropped literally the hours the night before. So it's like, how are you guys so quick? They're like, damn, I didn't even get to watch them do the recap. You know, you know, it's like, wait, I gotta see what they're talking about. Like, and you kick, I don't kick, know. Kick, 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 kick. It was very shut quick. the fuck up. It like, is, please, someone, some, someone get that the the butter the butter stock. For them, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm, Not the butter stuff for my Carly. No, because I'm really sick of them. I'm really sick of that whole cast. Like, and that, and yes, who's that? Daniel. I see you cooning over there in the corner. Like, shut the Did, fuck okay. Up. One final uh, final thoughts. Uh, 
I want your final thought on the Dan and uh, Boogie interview. Did you watch the interview? With no, T-Bow? I did not. I could care less what either of them have to motherfucking say. I could care less. Like, dead ass. Like, like, I, like my cat shit is how much I care about that shit. Like, I, I don't care. I don't care about what he has to say. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You, you pay them people their money or surrender yourself to the motherfucking authorities. You I don't give a fuck. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so either so shut the fuck up and go die in a fucking corner. Go back to your little fucking rock and just lay there and die there. Like, don't nobody want to like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sick of him. I really don't care. All these people need to do what. Remember that man from Glee who played Puck? <laughs> that's what all these people need to do. If you're not going to surrender yourself to the authorities, that's what you need to motherfucking do. I'm so sorry. Get the fuck out of here. We don't need you here inflation right. is bad enough the world is terrible enough like this did bring please. a negative stain into like the world because it's like at least back then it was the innocent greater times and it's like now we're finding out it wasn't so yeah i mean Any people been new though it's like yeah that's right. really what it is it's just like it's so like it's just disgusting and <laughs> like i just think i there's certain people that do deserve grace but just some people who don't yeah. Like Jenny, I'm those two women writers. I'm so sorry, but uh, th- I'm, with the Penelope Taint things, like y'all, he told you that what it meant, and you turned around and lied about it for him. No, so it's kind of like mm, chop, right. chop. Yeah. Thank you so much for calling in, Nini. Thank you for having <laughs> me. Oh my God. Bye. Period. <laughs> All right, we're going to end it off there. Thank you guys so much for calling in and giving y'all opinions. I plan on doing a lot more stuff like this, um, especially this year, uh, diversifying our content so we can really talk about some things besides these, some of these stupid network dramas that we always talk about on here, okay? Now, let me know what you guys think down below. Please be respectful in the comments. If you have been through anything uh, dealing with this whole docu series, this is a trigger warning. Um, I'm going to put, of course, beforehand... So that way, if anybody's been through anything like this, you won't be triggered watching um, this whole um, after show, okay? Thank you guys for the ones that did call and give your opinions. Um, of course, this is just a sad situation. Uh, leave your comments down below, and we're all babies. Ain't no personal thing.